And we should be live now. I think. I never know. Oh, I think we, yeah, yeah, there it is. And apparently now I have super stickers. Huzzah, I guess. I, I don't know. Alrighty, guys. Uh, just as usual, let me know. If you can see it, please leave a comment. If everything is alright, you can hear me, you can see me. Just the usual drill. I don't see any comments just yet, so... I wonder if I messed up something or not. But it showed me that three people are watching, so... I don't know. <laughs> Maybe now five people are watching. So if you can hear me, if you can see me properly, everything is working all right, then please leave a comment and then I will know. Okay, I can see a comment. In two, three, yay! Okay, adding moderators. Okay, so welcome. <laughs> As usual, I will be waiting a few minutes before I start drawing. So everyone can get the notification that the stream is starting and we're starting that it's past 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So yeah, we are doing the usual waiting. Kind of weird because you don't know it's showing me when I start the streaming. Things are changing and I'm not sure how you feel about that. <laughs> okay, looking at the comments. Savage Beards, hello, hello. Peter says hello, hello. <laughs> hello. Normal Comic Junkie, ayo, hello. Sokita Oshiwade, and I'm pretty sure I'm butchering your name. <laughs> Kita is here, what's good everybody? Kentaro Zero says hello, hello. It's nice to see you guys here again. Lots of familiar names. And once again, we're waiting a bit for people to show up. It's it's five past four. So I guess I will be waiting about three, four, five-ish minutes. Let's say, let's wait five before I start driving because I usually like to start and people are already here, everyone said their hello, so I can start focusing on the artwork. And just as usual, you know, um, feel free to ask questions in the comments and, um, you know, if you have something to tell to the others or you just want to have a conversation with each other, then please use the at and the username so I know that you're talking with each other and not necessarily with me, so I don't have to read those because, you know, usually <laughs> these streams are quite busy for me because I'm, I'm I'm trying to focus on the artwork, but at the same time I'm trying to keep up with the comments. So, so yeah, although hopefully this time it will be easier because we now have a moderator, so hopefully things won't get nasty in the comment sections. Um, Storm Reeve. Uh, Sunny, hi, hello. <laughs> it's always nice to see the familiar names. So, yeah. Uh, Storm Revs. Uh, oh, when, when you're talking to me, you don't necessarily have to use the ad because then I know that <laughs> it's probably for me, but yeah, that's a way too. So. <laughs> I'm sorry I missed your last two streams, but I made sure to watch this one. Oh, that's, that's very nice. And, you know, of course, you know, the live stream is about interacting live, but at the same time, you know, you can always catch up with the stream later, so there's that option. I mean, this stream will be available after the stream, probably an hour or two after, or maybe a bit more, depending on processing time. But I always make sure that the streams are available later on as well, so everyone can catch them, because I know that, you know, I have viewers from all around the globe, so it's borderline impossible to find a streaming time which is fitting for everyone, like, heck, even it's for me it's pretty late like it's uh past 10 p.m where i am now so it's kind of late of course you know it's a saturday so 
it's not much of a big deal, although I wear up tomorrow, so there's that, but never mind. So, <laughs> so yeah, don't, don't feel bad about missing my streams. It's I, I just really appreciate if you watch them later or, or you know, you, you join whenever you can. So that's that's all that matters. And yeah, still waiting a bit for people. I think I yeah, I, I think I made a post on Instagram. Yeah. So I'm giving them a few more minutes, I guess. This is a good thing to join the notification squad. Although, I'm not sure. Do you guys receive the notifications? <laughs> I, I don't trust YouTube that much because sometimes it doesn't even show me. Um, whenever someone uploads something and I knew, I, I know I hit the notification button and I'm subscribed, but many times I'm just not receiving any notification about the videos I really would want to watch, but Oh well, <laughs> maybe that's just me. You know, technology, I'm not really good with it, so, so, so yeah. <laughs> um, let's see, Kagami360, hello, moods. Yes, made it in time. Yep, you're absolutely in time. I haven't started anything yet, so <laughs> didn't miss anything. Just me rambling here. Uh, Stormrave, have you watched Demon Slayer? Uh, I heard a lot about it, but still haven't finished Bleach yet. If you watch it, is it really that good? Um, I started watching Demon Slayer, I think I'm around episode 8 or 9, so, so not even halfway through the series, or at least the first season. Um, I think it's pretty good. I kind of feel like the hype is bigger. <laughs> than what would be necessary. Um, at the same time, uh, the animation quality, the sound design, everything is really, really beautiful about this anime. Like, they have some really outstanding animation. Uh, but, you know, since it's UFO table, I think that was kind of expected because they are really good. Like, hands down, they are one of the very few animation studios who are actually good with 3D animation or at least mixing the 3D animation with the 2D animation style and, and they have some beautiful aesthetics in this anime so for that it's definitely worth it um, I know that episode I think 17 or 18 was like this biggest hype of the internet recently and uh, I haven't seen the episode yet but I couldn't avoid the spoilers so I've seen the clip and oh my god like yeah <laughs> It's worth it because it's it's really nice. Um, it's not my favorite anime. I, I don't feel like it's that outstanding, but but it's a really really enjoyable ride. So if you have the time and you enjoy these kind of stories, like if you're a fan of Bleach, you probably will enjoy it. So you know, slaying demons with swords and techniques and all the stuff. It's it's your typical shonen um, with some not so typical elements. Like I I kind of feel like the main character is more on the likable side, like, you know, he's, he's not the edgy kid, he's not not necessarily that dorky, but yeah, so it, it, I, I can recommend it, go watch it. <laughs> so yeah, but probably everyone else in the chat will tell you that, yeah, it's pretty good, like, I haven't really read any comments online saying that, yeah, no, it's bad, like, usually people really enjoy it, so yeah. Um... Kagami says the same, that yeah, it's good. Yep, I, I can agree. <laughs> um, so, Kita, this is the earliest I've been. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, like, in the stream, or is it early for you? Cantor <laughs> uh, Zero Demon Slayer is good. Yeah, once again. <laughs> um, but I do recommend Milan Saga. I haven't seen that one yet, but I heard that the manga was pretty good too. And the anime should be pretty good as well. I mean, it's it's done by Studio Wit, as far as I know, so... So, yeah, I... Eventually, when I will have the time to watch more anime, I really would like to to at least see a few episodes of it. But, yeah, recently I, I haven't been watching any anime. Like, I haven't seen anything from the new... Uh, I think we're in, yeah, we're in the fall season, like... I haven't seen anything. Like I haven't even seen the new opening for Hero Academia or anything. Like I'm so behind everything. The only thing I'm watching is Ruby, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it for me and my anime dos. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, Kagami. It was 19. Oh, okay, so episode 19. I, I I remember that it was in the other end of the dance, but yeah, I couldn't remember exactly. 
Uh, normal quick jump key. Demon Slayer is so is close to ending its running jump. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of t titles seem to near their ends in jump. I I have to speed the manga. And yeah, by the looks of it, it's Neverland will end pretty soon. Like, yeah, based on the last chapter, I, I think we're getting there. Um, Haikyuu is in its final arc, which makes me super sad on so many levels, but I'm not gonna go into that right now. And yeah, some others go close to their end, so yeah. Okay, so I think we have quite a few people now, so I'm just gonna catch up very quick with the comments and then I'm gonna start actually drawing because I know that's why you're here, so in the meantime, you can look at this picture. It's actually an artwork I did for Halloween um, and also for issue 112 of Saturday AM. If you're not familiar with it, Saturday AM is a bi-weekly edition. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Saturday M is a monthly digital manga anthology. It's actually the worst, most diverse manga anthology. And um, yeah, we have creators from all around the globe and all sorts of exciting content. And um, although Saigami was not present in issue 112, uh, we had a special uh, Halloween gallery and it was super fun. I, I absolutely loved everyone's artworks. And this was my take, of course. This is a cropped image, um, so it's not the full artwork. You can pretty much see everything that's on the picture, but you know, if you want the whole image, then you can see it in the magazine. And you know, you can also read the free issues uh, online, and you will find all of the links for Saturday AM and Saturday PM or Sister Magazine in my video description or in my profile. I'm not sure where the links are, so you know, you know the G, where to find everything. So, so yeah, um, so catching up in the comments, and then I'm gonna start dropping. Um, let's see, uh, Kentaro Zero. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Where we are? <laughs> I don't know, I'm lost in the comments already. I haven't even started driving yet. Um, Kagami, uh, question. Would you consider anyone in Saturday AM your rival? If so, who's your biggest rival? <laughs> well, you know, in Saturday AM we are more like family. Like, they really are like family to me. Um, but it's kind of funny because... Even before Saturday AM, I always considered Byte um, to be my rival. <laughs> uh, because before either of us joined Saturday AM, we actually were taking part in several competitions. Like if you're here from the old YouTube days when uh, Cartoon Block had competitions and stuff like that, we were there. And you know, there was a time when Byte was winning and I was second place, and there was another competition had by another artist uh, where I won and Byte was second or third place. So it was super fun because we were duking it out even without knowing each other. So, so you know, if if I were to compare it to the whole Bakuman and rival stuff, then I would totally say that yeah, White White Manga is like the Nizuma IG. <laughs> To, to me, but but you know, um, I I don't really feel that competitive um, because you know he's he's one of the nicest people you will ever meet and 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 you know he and the other artists of Saturday AM are like family to me now so it's there's not really rivalry going on we're we'll, we're supporting each other and and we're fighting together for a shared goal so it's it's not that shown and jumpish oh we gotta do it out kind of vibe that we have going on. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I probably won't be able to catch up with the comments because I really need to start driving because we have this stream going on for now 15 minutes and I haven't even lifted up this pen. So, um, I'm gonna close this one. And what I will be working on, just a little bit of heads up. Um, it's a fan art that I'm doing purely just for fun. Um, because I really want to do it. <laughs> and I figured that's been a really long time since I did something in these streams that I really wanted to do. I don't really draw for just my own pleasure or for my own fun. So I figured this time it could be that artwork. Um, but at the same time, it's a minor spoiler, so please be warned. <laughs> um, so today the newest episode of Ruby Volume 7 came out and there was this cute little moment and I really want to draw a fan art based on that. Uh, the moment is nothing spoilerish, so even if you haven't seen the episode, if you're not a first member or anything, then I'm sorry, but at the same time, you know, it, it won't spoil anything story-wise. It's just literally that moment that 
happens. And probably if I weren't telling you this, you wouldn't even know that it's a spoiler, so maybe I even shouldn't have warned you. So, yeah, I don't know. I already seen several people actually doing this artwork, so. You know, when, when, I, when I've seen the episode, I was like, oh yeah, I really want to draw this. And, and, you know, maybe this could be a first for me. And then I've seen at least three different artists drawing this picture already. <laughs> so I'm a little bit behind on this bandwagon. But at the same time, you know, like I said, it's just something I, I really want to do for fun. So I actually started up a very rough sketch. Um, so I'm going to refine that a little bit. I probably will ink and color it as well, depending on how fast I can work on it. Like, I, I really want to do some, some colored artwork, because in the last few streams, I think I only did sketches and some inking for manga pages. So I figured this time I'm just going to be doing some colored fan art for fun. Because, yeah, <laughs> I really draw for fun. Okay, so my laptop is lagging so much. Yeah, no, then save it. Okay, so this is actually my reference picture. Um, so this is from actually the show. So once again, spoilers. <laughs> I'm gonna make it small. I can draw them from memory. So I will have to look at this as I draw. Okay. So yeah, this this is this is all of it. So what I just want to draw is basically, you know, it's Yang and Lee taking a selfie. And what I want to draw is basically this part of the <laughs> the image. So I basically just want to draw the picture that they are taking. I've seen other people drawing this whole stuff in their own style, but I figured I might as well just go for the picture. So yeah, before I start, I'm, I'm gonna catch up a little bit with the comments, but now you know what I will be drawing, so so yeah. I almost started drawing. <laughs> um, let's see, uh, Sakita, I heard the monthly year is close to beating One Piece in sales. Uh, yeah, they, they had really good sales. One Piece is though a beast, like it says several million copies uh, per volume, so, so, so yeah. I, I think the closest title ever been to beating One Piece was Attack on Titan and Kingdom. So I'm not sure, but I know that that uh, the Demon Slayer has monstrous sales. So yeah. Kentaro Zero, I do recommend the Villain Saga manga. And PS the Villain Saga manga is almost going to be ending. Wow, everything is ending. <laughs> uh Calum Pain, Saigami Volume 3. Working on that. <laughs> um we don't know a set date yet because I still have a lot, a lot of pages to draw. Um, but hopefully we will be able to publish Saigami Volume 3 in the first half of 2020. Of course, there's a lot of things going on, so... So yeah, we will be making announcements. And um, I will do my best to finish it up as soon as I can. Um, it will return in issue 114 of Saturday AM, so that will be your last issue for the year, and that will have a Saigami installment that I'm super excited about, because I think it's hands down one of my best cliffhangers. So please look forward to that, and yeah, then with that chapter we will be almost halfway through volume 3, so getting there. Uh, I'm going to be asking for Saigami for Christmas. Oh, thank you, thank you, well, <laughs> I hope you get it, and if you do, I hope you will enjoy reading it. And yeah, guys, don't forget that you can read the first three chapters online for free. And you can get the volumes worldwide. It's available on Amazon or Book Depository or from the Saturday M store. So yeah, it could be the perfect Christmas gift. And if you do get it, I appreciate your support a lot. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna start a question and then I'm gonna start drawing because I really need to start drawing <laughs> during these streams. Um, Storm Nail. Also, I I saw one of your stories on Instagram. You pulled through your art book, right? Yep, I I did. Um, yeah, actually, um, um, yeah, that has been rough. Um, thinking about it a lot, um, it actually might have been more like a burnout than an actual art block only because uh, uh well art block can be an iffy topic um because you know um uh, art block can be something that you really just don't feel like drawing um but with me in this case it was 
um, coming with some more emotional uh, or heck, even mental problems. Like you know, it it it, it was closer to a, to a complete burnout and um, and this like case of depression, I guess. Um, so yeah, things things been a bit rough, um, and that really really did show in my motivation and 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 just in everything. Um, so yeah, even art was 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 really hard for me to do. Like I I just couldn't really do anything about it. Like even though I I know that I have to draw because I have commissions and all that stuff, it just didn't feel right. I I just didn't find joy in anything, and it wasn't just about out. Uh, about art, like I, I didn't want to watch anything. That's when I fell out of reading manga and watching anime completely. And and yeah, I, I've I've been in a in a in a really really low emotional uh, state for for quite a few weeks. So so yeah, that's 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 been rough. And that that was when I also figured that I might look for some help or uh, look for some solutions um, to fix this. Um, so I tried out different things and of course I, I knew that sooner or later I will have to, to go back to art no matter how I feel but at the same time you know it's, it's kind of tricky when nothing really works out so so yeah so what I did was basically I just started to doodle for fun something that I wanted um, so basically, it's kind of hard because I can't talk about everything. <laughs> um, so I started to to draw stuff um, for a personal project, um, and interestingly, that was what really helped me move out um, because I really find my joy in this uh, project, and at the same time, I kind of got in the zone with it, like I, I borderline became obsessed uh, with this project and that really helped me, that I finally had something to focus on and and yeah, that that, that really put me through this art block. So, so yeah, it, you know, it was interesting to see that help kind of came from a place where I wasn't expecting it from, so... So yeah, that, that was interesting. Um, I actually have more stuff about this <laughs> and, and the whole rant and everything, the process uh, on my Patreon. Like, um, my, my Patreon is not just the behind the scene uh, stuff or, or, you know, my 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 channel for paid content, but it's kind of like my venting channel as well. <laughs> so my, my supporters on Patreon have had read some some stuff. So so yeah, but it's 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 been quite a journey. And then I'm I'm super happy to say that yeah I'm I'm through that burnout or art block or whatever that was that emotional down, and uh, I'm super happy to be able to work on stuff again and and yeah things things are are working out and there are some very exciting news coming. I can't talk about them just yet, but stay tuned. And I'm still not making too much progress here. Uh, I'm I'm absolutely not used to drawing these two, so so it's kind of hard because I I still want to draw them in my own style, but at the same time I I want to make sure that I'm not alienating them that much. Of course, uh, this is not my first Bumblebee artwork. Um, but I haven't posted it to the public just yet. Probably will as soon as I finish because there was this other artwork. There was another artwork, so yeah, I've been I've been drumming a few Ruby artworks here and there, and, um, and recently I, I I did draw an artwork that I was pretty happy with. <laughs> um, it's something I I did post to my patrons and yeah, <laughs> that also had a story on its own. So. So yeah, probably will post that eventually to public as well. But for now, I figured this might be a good start because I I don't usually well I I do a lot of fun arts, but I usually just do like character artworks. So I don't uh, auto saving yeah auto saving. I don't do much in the way of characters interacting or 
our shipping artworks. So yeah. Their eyes are weird. So different than my own style. So I'm not even sure what I'm going on for here, so yeah. Okay, comments. Um uh, can't resume my manga is a mixture of Milan's saga, Jojo's bizarre adventure, Berserk, and I'm so sad Haku's ending too. Oh my god, you tell me. <laughs> I was... Oh my god. <laughs> like, like, the last few chapters hit so hard in Haikyuu and I really don't want to spoil anything, but... Wow. <laughs> Emotional roller coaster there. Um... Normal comic junkie. Question, Sunny. Do you think that in the next decade, foreigners will start making it into Japanese manga publishers? Um, I don't know. Um, well, we already see the Japanese trying out different things with foreigners. You know, um, Radiant getting an anime was a huge step. There's the Silent Manga Audition. There were a bunch of competitions with uh, Kodansha and Medibang and all sorts of stuff. So, you know, there, there are steps. At the same time, you know, uh, there are already foreigners working in Japan in the manga and animation industry. Um, it's just, you know, usually it doesn't come with a lot of bells and whistles. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of uh, Asian people working in Japan in the manga industry. Uh, you know, heck, even Shonen Jump has, uh, like, uh, Boichi. Um, the artist for uh, Dr. Stone, he's not Japanese, um, he's, he's Korean as far as I know, so so yeah, you know, there, there are already foreigners, um, but the Japanese don't really like to make a fuss about that. Um, so it is possible, but at the same time, you know, um, I'm, I'm not sure. It's it's kind of hard to, to make it in Japan, and you know, there, there are steps showing that it might happen. I don't know. I, I'm surely not trying <laughs> um, to look more into that. Uh, there was a time when I was younger and I was like, oh yeah, I have totally try to go for Japan, but at the same time I was like, nope. <laughs> we, we have the rest of the world, we, we don't necessarily need Japan uh, for this, and you know that's why I really like what we do at Saturday AM, because we have all this talent from all around the globe, and and yeah, it's, it's not always about Japan, so... Um, let's see. Uh, Rook Spectre 101. Yay, Ruby Fan Art. Yep, damn right. <laughs> this girl is a fangirl here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really love Ruby. So, yeah, I actually um, had an older Ruby Fan Art. Um, I think I did it like two or three years ago. Maybe two, I'm not sure. Um, my very first Ruby Fan Art was a piece of Jean. And looking back at it, I'm really not happy with it, but at the time I was like, yep, yeah, this is something I can do, but yeah, now, now I, I'm, <laughs> I'm seeing so many mistakes in that artwork, but, but yeah, that was my humble start with really fan art. Um, Kagami, uh, One Piece ending in five years confirmed. Oh yeah, I actually read an article about that, that said, yeah, it will in, in five years, and yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. Like, I I knew that eventually it will end, and, and I think quite a few years ago, um, we got a notification that actually One Piece is at as its halfway point, I think. Um, I'm not sure which arc that was, though, I can't remember it anymore. Um, and I, I kind of felt like that... One Piece won't ever end in my lifetime, so... <laughs> so yeah, but... Yeah, five years suddenly seems super close. So, it's, it's very interesting to see... Literally all of the old series coming to an end. I mean, right now, the three older series in, in Jump are One Piece, Hunter x Hunter, and Haikyuu. And Haikyuu started not that long ago, so it's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, Things are changing now that way. God bless digital. <laughs> um, 
Grimheim, hello, hello, nice to see you here. Um, place for Christ, uh, thoughts or fries? I'm not sure what thoughts are, but I, I like fries, so. <laughs> um, Matthew Badia, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. Uh, are you going to Anime NYC next year? I'm not sure. Uh, there's always a chance. I mean, last year? Not last year. Was it last year? No. In 2017, I think. So 30 was at and you know, that was a pretty good convention for us. So I guess there's always a chance. Um, but we shall see. I, I don't know anything in advance. And even if I, I knew, I probably wouldn't be allowed to talk about it. So. <laughs> So not sure, but you know, if you want to have Saturday AM or any of our creators at your local convention, you can always just message uh, the organizers and tell them that, hey, you know, there's this creator you should invite as a guest. I mean, that's how, you know, they invite cosplayers and voice actors and stuff like that. So, you know, you can always give it a try and who knows, maybe they will invite us and then we can meet in person and stuff like that. It's always super exciting. That that's the thing I love about conventions the most. Um, let's see. Okay, that's a question for everyone. Um, Storm Rave, just don't be like. Me and trying copying H. Roda's work habit. You know, sleeping two, three hours a night during the week and then sleeping all day because you're spending so much time driving. Uh, spending two, three hours a night for five days a week and then sleeping all day in the last two. Uh, whenever I have a chapter to finish, I can't stop driving because I get anxious till my chapter is finished. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm over that phase. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting older now, so my body just... just can't take those all nighters anymore. I mean, I I still don't sleep that much um, as it would be recommended. Um, but yeah, I <laughs> I've learned to respect my body, and um, and yeah, skipping on sleep and running on just pure willing guts doesn't do any good. So so yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. Um, there was a time when I I. I used to just draw all night and go to work and not sleep at all. And that really wasn't good, so... So yeah. Heck, even um, even uh, many Japanese manga artists and people who work in the animation field are are getting quite vocal about that, that it's freaking unhealthy. And people really shouldn't abuse their own health and body um, for crunch time and, and stuff like that. So I'm actually really happy that Suddenly, you know, not getting sleep and just grinding through work is not this over-glorified thing. People think that, oh yeah, you still need to do that in order to become a manga artist. It's bullshit. Like, no, you, you, you really don't need to to go to that length. And, and you know, you, you actually can work more efficiently after a good night's sleep. So, so yeah, don't, don't need sleep. And I'm really slow with this one. <laughs> uh, well, once I get the first layer of sketch done, it will be easier. Um, if you're new to my work method, what I usually do is I have uh, my first sketch layer, which is supposed to be a rough sketch. Although here, you might think it's it's more refined then, because I really can get the proportion of their eyes. So I'm spending a bit more time on it than usually. And then I will go in with another layer of refined sketch where I will be adding more of the details. Um, so, so yeah, normally I'm <laughs> way faster than this. Um, and I think I will shrink the image a little bit. Yeah. Maybe yeah, because there won't be enough room for the hairs and the ears and all the stuff, so time to catch up in the comments. <laughs> Um, can there I'm trying to get published in Ultra Jump for young and all. Well, good luck. Um, Timothy Wardzi, big fan of your work. Any advice for a soon to be manga creator? 
Well, thank you. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think one of my first advice is just just <laughs> get some sleep and rest while you do, and you know, don't get obsessed with work. Um, and you know, always. Well, there, there are a lot of cliche advice that <laughs> I could give you, like you know, always focus on giving your best, but at the same time, don't chase perfection. And and, um, and yeah, I'm not saying focus more on quantity than quality, but um, it's important to know your limits and um, and and you know, um, I think one of the most common beginner mistake is what we see that people are just redrawing, rewriting, redrawing, rewriting, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But when you realize that you spend the last couple of years just just re Rehashing, re 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 restarting your perfect idea, and you're not really making any progress. That's that's a dangerous trap. So so don't fall into that. Just just start working on stuff. Like, you know, your very first work will be shit. There's just no helping that. You can ask any of our creators; they will tell you the same. Your first work will be bad, no matter what you do. Um, that's why it's important to start out with a short story and not to jump into a huge epic right of the bat because, you know, your very first story won't be that good, your very first artwork won't be that good either. So, so yeah, just, just start small, start with something short so you will get that feeling of accomplishment that, you know, you will also learn a lot about yourself, how you work, what you need and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, except that not everything will be perfect. Not everything will be perfect as you go on. So, so yeah, might as well just just work with that. So, yeah, this is more like a rambling than an advice, but <laughs> this is the best not cliche advice I can give you. So, yeah. Uh, Savage beer arts. I haven't studied how the pencil and drew something in a few weeks. I will have to show you the sketches I did do later on. Well, you know, maybe you just need a break or you. You need to focus on studying and stuff like that, but, you know, don't necessarily feel pressured that you always have to draw. You know, as long as you're not in a contract or anything, give yourself the time uh, to take a break and and enjoy stuff, so, so yeah. And then we should be making some progress here. <laughs> oh, I'm so not gonna finish this artwork tonight. <laughs> Too bad. That really was my intention, honestly. <laughs> And it's kind of funny because you can't really see the ears of the girls here, but I'm drawing them anyways, because <laughs> I just can't get the proportions of the head right if I don't draw the ears, and it's, it's so frustrating. Like, there was this time when I had a character who actually had animal ears only and not human ears, and um, I still drew her ears, because I, I just had to, because that, that's how I draw the face. So. <laughs> And the other day, I actually was working on a commission of a character who's who's not even human looking. Like, he was missing the nose and a bunch of parts, and uh, the character didn't even have ears, so I had so much trouble. And it, it was supposed to be such an easy artwork, but it wasn't. Um, Kagami, in Saturday AM, um, if you're a fast artist and are popular, and each chapter was quality, could you hypothetically get into each issue every two weeks or? Is that not how it works? Just wondering. Um, well, we're not doing bi-weekly anymore. We're only doing bi-weekly issues during summer months when we have summer of manga running. Now we're running on a monthly basis. Um, like uh, this year, we're, we're having 14 issues. So that's monthly plus, um, you know, we're having a few bi-weekly issues um, during summer, um, but we're not taking those uh, breaks anymore. Um, hypothetically, Yes, uh, but at the same time, none of our artists was able to do that. Like, our fastest creator is Jay Odin, and he is incredible and on so many levels, and and he's super fast. But not even he was able to be in all of the issues. And and yeah, um, you won't necessarily be in all of the issues. Like, you know, there's there's some strategy going into putting together those magazines. Um, so you know, even if you have content, you might be withheld. Uh, to make sure we have buffer content in case some of our other creators uh, can't finish on time or anything. So, so yeah, it's there. There's more planning than just uh, making sure we have the creators in every issue. Of course, you know that, that's great, and, and you know consistency is key. So we, we've seen that that it really helps. 
um, the popularity of each series whenever they appear frequently in, in sequential issues. Um, but at the same time, um, it's it's not not that mandatory, I would say. Like it's we, we know it, it's very hard um, to achieve. So so yeah. But hypothetically, sure. But you you don't necessarily need to burn yourself out like that. Plus, you know, all of our creators have something next to Saturday AM. Um, so you know, some have school, some have work or multiple jobs, families, and all the stuff to take care of. So so yeah, it's it's it's. It's just very hard to purely just focus on artwork, so so yeah. Um, Sanchez Knight, hi Sunny, I'm dropping by by on vacation in the Bahamas. Wow, good for you. <laughs> well, enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> oh, that sounds lovely. <laughs> um, Magic Art, what's up, Sunny? <laughs> Hello, nice to see you here. Um, Stormy, my thing if if I can. If I can work non-stop with no distraction, I can crack to 19 to 20 pages chapter a month. Yeah, um, and you know, that's pretty cool and I think that's something that's true to many artists. But the main issue in that sentence is that if and no distraction. And usually that's not how it is, sadly. Like, sure, you know, if, if if you don't have anything else to do, you just stay at home and, and draw, then, then sure, you know, it's if it's like a job like any other, then it's possible to just focus and grind those pages out and get a huge amount of content out. But, you know, like I said, our creators have jobs, families, school, a lot of issues to take care of, so it's, it's borderline impossible to just focus on art. Papa Ki... Uh, sorry, I'm returning your name, Kinisu. Uh, should beginners pursue an editor? Um, if you have access to one, then absolutely, because an editor can be a huge help. Um, you know, it's, it's always great to have someone else's advice, someone to have take a look at your artworks and story and have you figure things out, guide you, especially when, when you're when you're new and not necessarily know what you're doing and stuff like that. Or heck, even just getting a proofreader can be such a tremendous change. Uh, because we can see so many webcomics online and, and the grammar is all over the place and there are typos and it's just taking away from the pleasure of reading. So so yeah, if, if you can, then, then sure. I'm not saying it's something you need to get obsessed with. Um, you know, once you get into a publisher, you will uh, get an editor anyway. Um, but yeah, if you can and, you know, if you have the option, then it, it surely is worth because working together with an editor can really be huge. And yeah, it, it's a good thing to have an editor. <laughs> um, Haru Kamiyard, hey, glad I made it in time. Oh, it's been nice to see you here. <laughs> um, even though I know it's late for you. <laughs> Go Europe. Um, can I mean, oh, I see, interesting. Um, Sokita, I hope you manga artist of Saturday AM uh, stay healthy for your schedule. The schedule of jam manga is particularly killing them. Yeah, like, it, it's crazy. And, and, you know, they at least have help. Um, all of our creators are working on their own. And, you know, it's not their only um, job, basically. Like I said, all of our creators are doing something next to manga. So yeah, keeping up with a weekly schedule would be impossible for us. And we don't have assistance, we don't have a team of five, six people helping us. So so yeah, we're 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 trying to be as flexible as we can with our creators and and you know that's why many times um, even if the creator has already content, we're holding them back, saying them that yeah, good job, now start drawing the next installment of your series. And you know, you will get more time, you don't have to burn out and stuff like that. So plus we also give mandatory breaks um to our creators. Um because it's important. <laughs> so 
so, so yeah. Um, let's see, Grimheim. The haircut you have really suits you. You look so adorable. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I just got it recently, so it's kind of like my winter style. <laughs> because I, I, I don't really like to have my hair long for winter months, because, you know, whenever I wear a hat, I always feel uncomfortable that I can't have my hair tied up. So, so I usually cut it for winter. And, you know, this time I also was experimenting with a lot of color. I'm not sure if it shows up on camera or not, but but yeah, we have some, some colors going on here. So I actually was super happy with this haircut and, and yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, Storm Rave, your drawing is looking pretty fire so far. Will you post it on Insta when it's finished? Yeah, 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 I, I will. Um, like I said, I, I, I want to color it as well. Um, so there will be a lot more work going into this, but I really want to post it. And like I said, there will be some more Ruby fan art coming, because I just can't help it. I, I just love Ruby so much. And and yeah, I, I like I said, I already have a, a borderline finished. I, I really just need to add some more shading and a bit more um, highlights. Artwork coming with this too, but, but yeah, I, I think this will be the first one I post. Uh, I can't remember the details of Blake's jacket there, so this will be interesting. Um, Harukami Art. Oh yeah, it's a bit almost 11 p.m. here. Yep, same here. <laughs> uh, well, at least, you know, it's Saturday, so I hope you have the next day off or something and you will get plenty of rest. Uh, Stormy, fun fact, most mangaka in Japan have anywhere from 6 to 12 assistants. Yeah, that's that's like crazy. Like, I can't even imagine working with that many people. Like, um, you know, this year uh, we had the comic artist internship going on with Saturday AM. So, we tried um, bringing in my interns uh, so they helped me with the pages, you know. Uh, some of them were doing screen tones, some of them were doing some effects and some some of the backgrounds. And actually, even though they all did a great job, it was so freaking stressful for me. <laughs> that it was crazy because, you know, I, I wasn't sure. Am I giving them the right directions? Am, am, I, am I being clear enough? Will they know what to do? And, and, you know, it's not like I didn't trust them. But at the same time, suddenly I was in charge of five different people with five different kind of equipment and experience level and and our style and it was just <laughs> it, it was it was an experience so i i guess it's you know completely different if if you're actually working together with those people like you know they are sitting next to you so you can instruct them easier and um and stuff like that but uh but yeah it's <laughs> It, 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 it was interesting, so I, I can't even imagine working together uh, like that. So I mean, I, I kind of can, but but it, it surely is a learning curve. Um, of course, you know, if it's just screen toning, I, I think that's an easier stuff. Like uh, recently, I had a hungry artist friend helping me with uh, some of my screen tonings, so she's kind of picking up an assistant position for screen tones. But that's just screen tones, so, so yeah, there, there's a lot. Like, I'm not sure if I, I would be able to give proper instructions on how to do complete background for my stuff and things like that. So, so yeah, it's interesting. Um, Lemon Holmes, a lot of artists take many uh, different sketch designs and references to characters. How long did it take for you to get Amy's design perfect? Or how did you already get it right the first take? Well, <laughs> that's actually quite interesting because when I first did Ayumi, I didn't really make too much of a fuss about design. For the record, I was 15, I had no idea what I was doing, it wasn't even serious, it was like a pure fangirlish moment that I'm gonna be drawing a comic. And um, so I just did. <laughs> so I literally just gave her clothes that I was like, yeah, I guess this could work, but 
but you know that was start where going into those design choices uh, when I first started. This was in 2005, so a long time ago. Yes, I'm old. Um, and, um, you know, I literally just tried out different things. Um, as I was drawing the chapters, you know, I tried out more girlish outfits, more, more uh, you know, sports stuff, more fantasy stuff. And um, in 2013, when I restarted Saigami, I actually started to put more thoughts into the design and, and all the stuff. So what was important for me uh, when it came to her design um, is that uh, I wanted something that's simple enough, but at the same time, it's not necessarily bland. So one thing that was important for me that it could be something that, you know, everyone would be able to wear, like, uh, I used to be a cosplayer, so I always appreciated cosplays that were easy to make, like, even if, you know, I don't have warble or ever foam or, or stuff like that, I still can do the cosplay. So I kind of wanted to do something along those lines, something that, you know, easy to make. And uh, at the same time, you know, it's something that is kind of recognizable. So I, I added some small details um, to her design that I was like, yeah, this this is uh, natural enough and it looks normal enough, but at the same time, it's it's a it's a small touch. For example, with Ayumi's uh, first designs, um, I don't remember. Yeah, uh, the first detail that I added to her uh, clothing was, for example, the small ribbons on her shorts. Um, if you read the first uh, few chapters, uh, you will see that, you know, all of her shorts have those small ribbons on the sides. And, you know, that was something that was a super tiny detail. Um, but at the same time, you know, I kind of felt like that's, that's, that's part of her design, that's part of her clothing style, and that's, that's part of who she is. And also, you know, I, I always like her uh, wearing a hoodie and uh, having those uh, ribbons uh, coming out from the hoodie and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I focused on these small details. Uh, the same with the guys, you know, uh, for Sean, I added the, the small... Uh, I always forget what that thing is called. That, that It's not a choker, but... But the, the necktie kind of thingy that he wears, I, I always keep forgetting that. <laughs> so that, you know, um, for Edgy it was always the jacket with the high color, which was later explained kind of why he he wears those colors like that and stuff like that. So, so you know, I, I only focused on the small details um, when it came to the first designs, because I, I wanted something that is recognizable and you know, is it pointed that, oh yeah, I, I can see that that is his or her style, but at the same time, it's not over the top. Um, later on, I tried to, to be more ambitious with my design choices, and, um, you know, as the story moves forward, uh, I can just stick with your everyday, everyday clothing style. So, that was when I started to experiment a bit more with the more fantasy-esque styles and design um, and I first did uh, the cover for I can't remember issue something of Saturday AM where I, I, I drew the cast in those Celtic fantasy-like um, costumes kind of like you know they were just stepping out from an RPG and um, you know those were like super well received like that artwork is still one of my most popular ever online and you know the prints are always selling like crazy and stuff like that and um and yeah we realized that that might be a good direction to, to push the design and the story forward so now we're striving to bring in a bit more fantasy-esque style into that and you know of course with the story moving on it, it will be justified as well so it's not like this now we're in an rpg <laughs> so 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 yeah um so part of the designs come with the story, part of it come um, with the feedback we're actually receiving because, you know, at some point we have to take that into consideration as well. But at the same time, you know, I still prefer to think, keep things simple and make sure that it's something that would be easy to cosplay. Because why not? <laughs> so, so yeah. Um... Uh, let's see. 
on my other commands. Uh, let's see, I can see a lot of deleted message, so I hope nothing nasty was going on. Uh, tomato art, um, do you actually look like the main character of your manga? Uh, no. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, actually, a lot of people were asking that, that oh, uh, is she looking like you or, you know, um, uh, did you design her after yourself? And nope. Um, sure, you know, my hair color is kind of similar to hers, so there's that. But, you know, that's more like that. I really like this hair color, so when I chose the hair color for my main character, I chose what I like the most, so that was that design choice. Um, although when I first came up with Ayumi's design and all the stuff, I looked nothing like this. <laughs> like, this girl used to have very short hair, dark brown, so I looked nothing like her. Now, of course, the hair color is kind of like that. Um, also European, she's half European, so there's that. I have a very, very, very pale skin, so so yeah, there's that. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I I never wanted her to look like me, or never did I try to look like her. So coincidences? <laughs> no, not really. But yeah, it's it's mostly just the hair color. Like if I had like my original hair color, which is dark brown, probably wouldn't be asking this. It's just, you know, the way I dye my hair, I guess. <laughs> um, Harukami Art, I may be a bit quiet in the chat because I'm also watching Hunter x Hunter. Yeah, tomorrow I got free. Yeah, good for you! Um, Atomic Afro Art, what's your biggest inspiration on making Saigami? Um, well, lots of things. So it's kind of hard to pick a biggest I. I think, um, like I said, when, when I first started doing Saigami, it was just kind of fangirlish, so I kind of just wanted to to do a manga that I would want to read, so there was that. Um, I always like to tell stories. I, I, I started to write several novels before I started doing comics, so I, I already had a bunch of story ideas, and, and I, I really wanted to tell stories. And, um, and yeah, that, that turned out to be Saigami. Um, of course, you know, I, I kind of have several goals uh, with Saigami. Um, like, you know, I, I, I really want my stories to mean something. I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, they will be like this life-changing reading experience for people. But at the same time, it's always a huge thing when I get feedback that, you know, someone messages me that yeah i can totally relate to her or him and then i got it and then it really helped me to move over a problem or understand things when i read it in your comic and stuff like that so so those moments kind of became my biggest inspiration and motivation um so yeah i'm, I'm trying to tell a story uh with saigami that reflects on a lot of things um the way i i see things you know I'm kind of going back to my roots with several things, and um, and yeah. At the same time, I, I also want to to make sure that it's an enjoyable read. It has fun moments, uh, dramatic moments, it has you know, different kind of romance and stuff like that. So so overall, I just want it to be a good story that people will love to read and it will mean something to them. So so yeah. And then you know, beyond that, there there are a lot of a lot of inspirations for me into Saigami. So, so yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Rook Spectra, since people are asking for advice anyway, what would your advice be to someone who wanted to do their first one shot? Well, um, first of all, I would recommend to start with something short. Like, people, even when they are doing uh, one shots, they tend to go for like 50 to 60 pages and stuff like that and for something in the 30s tops like you know 20 30 pages that should be enough because it will force you to make a better selection of your ideas and um, i understand everyone is influenced by this long running series and all that stuff so it will be super hard to just compress your ideas 
into uh, 30 pages. And I know the struggle because I've been there. Uh, the first time I got published, my very first short story was 24 pages only. And it took me almost a year to come up with that. And it was super bad. Like I said, your first thing will be shit. Um, but, you know, um, first, when I approached the publisher, we were having different conversations. And um, I, I, I got to talk to an editor. And, um, yeah, you know, he was telling me that you're thinking in too long of a story. So so give me something short. And I was like, okay, well, I have this story that will only be like three volumes. And he was like, nope. <laughs> give me something that's 30 pages most and I was like no I can't do that like how am I supposed to tell a story in 30 pages um for the record this was the time before I even read Bakuman I, I'm not even sure if Bakuman was a thing then I don't know when when did Bakuman run does anyone know <laughs> so this was in 2008 so a long time ago <laughs> um and yeah it, it was a struggle for me and um then I I I, I started to work my way through, you know, I, I tried to compress my ideas and stuff like that. And then I finally got a story that was only 30 pages and I was like, yes, this is it. So I, I, I presented it to my editor and he was like, well, great, now let's cut it down to 24. And I was like, are you shitting me? Like, come on, dude, you can do this to me. And it was such a struggle. But in the end, you know, I managed to cut it down to 24 pages and nothing was lost on this story level. So I was like, huh. I guess something is going on here, and um, yeah, after that, I actually did several stories that were even shorter than that. I like my second publication that was only 18 pages, so it was way shorter than that, and this was working out perfectly. So I learned so much just by thinking in shorter stories that it was incredible, and it became a huge help later on, especially um, when I started to do Saigami for Saturday AM and uh, I have to think in installments so you know the volumes still have the chapters and I'm still working with chapters in Saigami but at the same time we are cutting up the chapters into installments that are going into separate issues of the magazine so after a while I had to learn how to put a story in seven pages only because sure it's part of a chapter but at the same time I want the readers to be hooked so in every installment I wanted to make sure that it has some sort of story element that could be enjoyed even by newcomers and it has some sort of cliffhanger that will get the readers on this on the edges of their seat that oh my god I can't wait for the next issue of Saturday AM. So there was a lot to learn on how to tell a story in just a few pages. So first of all I would recommend you um, to practice that, you know. Try to tie your stories in the shortest way possible. You don't even have to execute the pages, but you know, on the story level, that will be a huge help um, because you know it's it's often a problem that people just want to force everything into their their short stories. They want to show everything, but you don't really really don't need to do that. So so yeah, that that can be a huge help. Um, Stormrave, another fun fact. I did some research and apparently Mangaka spent... Okay, I won't say this one yet. Okay. Let's save. Save. Come on. Save already. <laughs> uh, sorry. So, um, summary of another fun fact. I did some research and apparently Mangaka spent three days working on the manuscript. Uh, think about that for a second. Yeah. Well, um, I know some time ago... Um, I can't remember his name, the guy who did uh, Nura, Rise of the Yokai Clan. Um, his schedule was published online and it was kind of crazy that, yeah, he, he barely worked three days on the manuscript. Uh, at the same time, you know, he spent at least two days working on, uh, you know, just the storyboards and all this stuff. So, so yeah, that's, that's like crazy grinding through the pages. Of course, you know, if you have a handful of people helping you, it becomes easier, but but still, you know, that's that's crazy. Like, my craziest schedule was when I completed 19 pages in five days. But I would never ever in my life do that again. Like, that was so freaking unhealthy. Like, in the end, I, ju I just passed out. And then I had two people helping me. Like, they were doing some erasing, filling in some blacks, scanning the pages for me, doing some of the screen tones. So. Yeah, no, thank you. 
but yeah, that's as usual because they, they have to spend time on working the story. And that's what I usually uh, say when people ask, you know, what's the hardest part? And it's not actually drawing the manuscripts. It's it's actually coming up with the story and planning things. So so yeah, that, that kind of makes sense that they spend like two days on that and only three days working on the pages. And yeah, still it's crazy. Um, uh, so Kita... With them having very few hours to sleep along other things, they are writing and drawing to try with a tired brain. Yeah, like, that's just overwhelming. At least, you know, now we can see that many times the creators are taking a break. Like, uh, you know, people are complaining that, oh yeah, One Piece used to go on, on a hiatus every other week, and, and Hero Academia was on a little break, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, they, they totally deserve that. Like, they have so much stuff going on, give them a break. Blake has such an awkward smile, it's so hard to draw. <laughs> oh my god. And I'm usually... Uh, well, I'm not bragging, but I kind of feel like that I'm... I'm good with drawing smiles most of the times, or at least I feel confident about that, but... Here it just feels so weird. <laughs> okay, I think... Um... I'm gonna lower the opposite now, and I'm gonna do a refined sketch now. And I'm gonna do that in sort of reddish color, because that's what I always do. <laughs> I need my habits. Um, let's see. Uh, Storm Reef. And imagine doing that for 10 plus years. Yeah, that's a work, y'all. Um, or the creator of One Piece had surgery and was seen working on his manuscript in the freaking hospital. It was nutty. Yeah, <laughs> I see. Like, you know, it's, uh, it's also a Japanese thing, like, they like to over glorify overworking yourself and, you know, putting work in front of everything, but it's just not healthy. And, and yeah, eventually, I think those things will have to change, even in Japan as well, so... So yeah. Um, Storm Reef. I think this design is iconic. Well, thank you. <laughs> I never thought about it like that, but I'm pretty happy if you feel that way. Um, okay, I see there's some a little conversation going on, so I guess I'm not reading that. <laughs> um, Storm Reef, if I can see Amy go into Luffy mode and deliver the widest, most jaw-breaking punch ever in my life when fulfilled a flaming punch. <laughs> that kind of would be funny. Uh, <laughs> but I don't think if I miss the close combat type, like... <laughs> well, I'm not, not, I'm not gonna go into detail and spoil anything of what I have in store for her when it comes to fighting style. Because, yeah, you know, Psygam is... It's an AM, so it's it's a shonen basically, so it will have fights and and I I, I have some exciting ideas for her. <laughs> but yeah, she probably wouldn't go like Luffy style <laughs> when it comes to punching someone. She will be punching someone though, like <laughs> stay tuned. But yeah, it kind of felt weird when like yeah, I don't want to spoil much, but if you read the previous installment of Saigami, I think it was... I don't remember which issue I was in. 110 or 111. Somewhere on those lines. And I had Ayumi punch. And oh my god, it was... I had too much fun with that scene. <laughs> so, so, yeah. I'm not sure if it was that funny for the readers as well. I hope it was. But yeah, you know, that, that was like her angry punch and yeah <laughs> i i think it was after or before i'm not sure but around the time i'm probably was telling me that i should draw her being more vicious and i'm like dude have you ever seen her <laughs> like, like you know there are some characters you just can't imagine being like all vicious and fighty and then stuff like that so so yeah i had a lot of fun with that <laughs> um Duty Big is Saturday M popular. I mean, how many people using that? Saturday M is good, but not mainstream. 
Well, I can't give you slight numbers, but we have fans and readers from all around the globe, like literally even from countries I never even heard about. And, and you know, that's, that's our strength. Um, we're not focused on Japan, we're not trying to copy anyone's style and, and what we're doing. We're truly focusing on creating quality content with diverse creators and focusing on diversity even with our content and um, and you would be surprised. <laughs> and you know, not mainstream, I'm not too sure about that. Um, we have some very mainstream feeling stories in, in Saturday AM. We have Saturday PM, which is a more mature type of uh, magazine. We have some really cool series there as well. And um, and yeah, <laughs> we are bigger than you think. So so yeah, stay, stay tuned for more because if you don't believe in us, you will be surprised. Uh, Storm Reef. Bro, 30 pages is freaking standard for one shot. Uh, yeah, um, 30 pages is actually a pretty good amount of pages to tell a story. And and yeah, even in Japan, like for, for some major competitions, 30 pages is, is pretty much the standard. So so yeah, that, that's a good way to practice telling a short story with 30 pages or even less. Like, believe me, it will only benefit you if you try to tell your story in less pages than that. And you know, that's why during Summer of Manga, we actually do force our creators to tell their short story in less than 30 pages, sometimes way less, and it is really working out. Uh, Kagami, Bakuman went from 2008 till 2013, I think, for manga. Yeah, I, I think that's about right, thank you. Because, like, yeah, I, I, I know for a fact that uh, when I first reached out to this editor, I had no idea about Bakuman, and um, yeah, I think Bakuman was already in its second year when I started reading it, so I, it was probably around 2010-ish, yeah, because when I did my second publication, I already read Bakuman, yeah, 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 that's true, yeah, okay, well, thank you. <laughs> uh, Devin Holmes, have you ever dreamed of seeing an animation of your series? If so, who would you want to uh, voice in the main cast? Oof, that's a tough one. Uh, I mean, of course, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure everyone ever <laughs> who's doing comics uh, dreamt of uh, seeing their works in animation because, you know, that's just super cool. Uh, for the record, I was never ever obsessed uh, with animation. Like, my main goal was to have my book. And for me, the book was always more important than the animation. But at the same time, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it would be super cool to have an anime or, or some sort of animation, like, you know, even if it's um, not like Japanese anime, we have now so many cool animations um, that are made outside of Japan, like, you know, Netflix has some cool shows and, and uh, I'm driving a Ruby artwork, <laughs> that's not Japanese at all, and, and, and I absolutely love the the animation style of Ruby. Of course, you know, not, not the first few seasons, you know, those are cool, but yeah, <laughs> it had its problem, but, but yeah. Um, my sectors, that's always kind of tricky for me, um, because I'm not that overly familiar with English voice actors. Now I'm, 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 I'm a bit better because once again, I'm a Ruby fanger, so I, I, I do know the voice actors from Ruby, and I've seen a few voice actors from other series that I watched with English dub. So there's that. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's always a tough one. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard. Um, I think for Sean, I totally would enjoy Michael Jones. Um, his his thing in Fairy Tale. He's also son in Ruby, and he he probably does some other uh, anime dubs as well. So so yeah, like like he would be so spot on for Sean. That's for sure. 
So, so that will be super fun. Um, for Reiji, I guess, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, Yuri Lowenthal, I think his name. He he was a magic character. I, I know that uh, he was also Sasuke in, in Naruto and, and a bunch of other characters. I I actually really like his voice. Um, so, you know, plus, you know, he, he's fit for edgy characters, so maybe that would work well for Reiji. Um, for Ayumi... Um, that's a tricky one. Um, yeah. I think... I'm not sure. Like, I really... I really could imagine Erin Zack, the voice of Blake, doing Ayumi, because she's 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 doing some wonderful job with with Blake, especially um, you know some of the melodramatic scenes. Like I could totally see that working for Ayumi as well. Um, or uh, maybe Laura Bailey. Um, that could be an interesting thing. Like that was actually something uh, someone. Uh, wrote me a couple months ago that, that, you know what, I could totally imagine Laura Bailey for Ayumi and I was like, who? <laughs> and I had no idea who she is, so I looked into her um, voice acting and stuff like that and I was like, yeah, I actually could see that working as well. Um, but before that, yeah, my, my first thought was was Erin Zach because I, I, I really love um, her, her voice and, and, and yeah, I think that would be interesting, so yeah. <laughs> but that's for the future. <laughs> Um, uh, let's see, uh, Kagami, anime first came 2010 or 11, I don't know, y yeah, I, I, I can't remember that, but I, I was already reading uh, the manga when they announced the anime, so yeah, that was probably later. Um, Furby King, I'm drawing a picture, I do realism, and I love your hair, hero and art. Oh. Thank you very much! <laughs> and good luck with your artwork! Uh, Stormrave, another fun fact. Masashi Kishimoto, creator of Naruto, confirmed that most of what was depicted in Bakuman is true for the manga industry, at least in Japan. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's pretty true. Like, I, I read several articles and all this stuff. Like, you know, there was a time I was super obsessed with Japanese publication and Jump, and I read all the interviews and, and everything. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty much true. Of course, you know, even in Bakuman, they they are kind of glorifying uh, this sort of overworking yourself in a way. So I think that's kind of dangerous there, but at the same time. They they did touch the topic that yeah you can die if you just focus on work and, and not not doing anything in order to keep yourself healthy and stuff like that so that was interesting to see actually um, let's see Don't scroll down too much there are so many comments I need to catch up um, Rook Spectrum. Um, thank you for the advice. I'm a long way off, uh, that, but it's nice to hear your views about it. Well, you're welcome, and you know, if, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Um, T the artist T. I used to do short stories a lot. As for others, I mostly had to leave them alone because I lost the inspiration for them. Well, yeah, you know, one of the things with short stories is that you kind of can play it safe because. When you start working on a series, you kind of need to stick with that. Um, because, you know, it, it's a series, so... It's not a good thing if you just ditch it as you go. Uh, but with short stories, you know, you can just finish it and there you have it. You you have a, a short story. And um, no more commitment, commitments there, I can't think this. Um, so yeah, and, and you know, that's... That's, I think, is like super common um, with webcomics. That the creators are just jumping into creating these long, long stories, and eventually they just stop doing it because they just don't feel like anymore. They don't have the time. They, they just fell out of it. They want to do something else. So 
so yeah, I think it's very important to experiment first with the short stories and, and find out what you really want to do and if, if you really want to do it at all. Because we've seen so many creators burn out after a few chapters or not even that much. So, so yeah. It's, it's always the safest and best way to just go for the short story at first. Um, Rogue Spectre. I got my main story, but I don't really want to try that yet. Kind of got my main story anyway. Um, well, that's you know, I think that kind of is the smart thing to do. Like, you want to practice first, and like I said, your first try will be not your best, that's for sure. And um, you don't necessarily have to jump into your Magnum opus right off the bat. So, you know, try smaller ideas, try ideas that you don't feel like are getting wasted on a try. So, you know, I, I had several stories that I was like, oh yeah, I really want to do that. But at the same time, I was like, yeah, I'm not, not good enough for that just yet. So I'm, I'm trying out something different. Um, so, so yeah, for example, there's this sportman guy I really, really want to do. Um, and I had the idea for years now. I, I had other sports manga ideas even before that. Like, even before I started Saigam for Saturday AM, I had several sports manga ideas. But I was like, yeah, my, my skills on anatomy are not good enough for a sports manga. Because when you want to draw a sports comic, you have to have your anatomy on point. You have to have dynamism in your art. You have to be sure that you can draw the human body working in all sorts of ways, in all sorts of different angles, because you have to make it exciting and use exciting camera angles for different movements. So I knew that I need to get better if I want to do a sports manga. So, so yeah, you know, understanding your limits is key in, in this career. I'm, I'm, well, at least in my opinion. So, you know, holding back your main story is not such a bad idea, as long as you improve. It's still better to hold back your main idea and draw some other short stories than just saving your, oh no, it's, it's, it will be perfect, and just redrawing, redrawing, redrawing the main idea, and it will never get you anywhere. So, so yeah. Um, Harukami Art, I hope some of... The Saturday M stories will someday be published in Germany, or at least able to buy them. Because I really want to read Saigami and Double Black. Well, <laughs> we hope so too. I mean, you know, they are already able to be worldwide in English. So if you don't mind reading them in English, then you can go ahead. Uh, they are available on the German Amazon as well, I know, because <laughs> uh, I, I had a few people telling me they got it from the German Amazon, so so it's an option. Um, and you know, in the future we really would like to distribute our books in different languages. And of course, Germany, the German market is key for us, because the German comic market is the second biggest in Europe. So we absolutely see the potential in that, so yeah, that, that would be super fun. So fingers crossed. <laughs> and in the meantime you can enjoy them in English. Um, Storm Rave. Sunny, have you ever heard of Miraculous Ladybug? Yep, I've seen a few episodes. Uh, I think it was from the first or second season. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure. <laughs> um, it was fun. <laughs> I mean, you know, I know it's it's like a huge hype. Um, or at least, I know it's a huge hype in Hungary. Um, because there's this artist friend of mine, and uh, I had some of her stuff with me at the convention I was attending to a few weeks ago, because she couldn't make it to the convention, but, you know, I had put her stuff on my table, and so, yeah, yeah, you know, she gave me her stand, and in exchange I was making some sales for her, and she had these uh, miraculous uh, pins, and they were selling like hot cakes, and I was like, wow, this stuff is popular, so... So yeah, I, I know a little bit about it, I, I, I've seen a couple of episodes, it was cute, it was fun, I never really looked into it any further than that, so so, so yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we, we have it with Hungary and Love as well, though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we do. Never looked into that, so... So, so yeah. 
But I know what it is. I might even remember the name of the main characters. I think it was Marinette and Ad Adrian was the guy, I think. The cat guy, I think. <laughs> uh, Clyde Carpatan, morning from the Asian server, Miss Andrea. Well, good morning to you. Um, I hope it's not too early for you. Leos uh, one, hiya. Oh, hello, nice to see you here too. Lots of familiar names and faces. It's nice. Um, Sokita, maybe Laura Bailey could do Ayumi. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I mean, if, she, if she's down for that, I, I would be cool with that. Like, <laughs> um, I don't think it's up to the creator to choose the voice actor, though, of course. <laughs> um, so yeah, but yeah, but I, I think that would be cool, definitely. Um, Grimheim, Miracles Ladybug had a great theme song, I love listening to it. Yeah, I I remember that. <laughs> that it was catchy, that's for sure. I remember seeing like a cosplay skit at one of the convention. The girl was dancing to the main song, and we were humming it for the rest of the day. <laughs> so, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it could be fun. Um. Stormwave, um, Sasuke for AG? Uh, I think for AG, you mean? <laughs> you know what? I could see it, lol. Had to think about it, but I can see it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the more you think about it, you're like, yeah. <laughs> that would work. Yeah, like, you know, it's. I God, I hope that Reggie is not as an edge lord as Sasuke, but there are sadly similarities there. <laughs> So, so yeah, I, I think it, it would work. Um, although, I haven't watched much of Naruto in English dubs, so I can't be like 100% sure about Yurovan Talasaski's voice, but, for example, in Ruby, once again, because today's stream is all about Ruby for me, <laughs> um, he's voicing Mercury, and I really love what he's doing with him, because Mercury is also like an edgy character, but at the same time, he kind of has that vibe that I could totally imagine going on for Eiji uh, with the voice acting, so so that's why I thought that, yeah, that, that totally could work. Um, Ayan Ahmed, hello, hello, welcome to the stream. Ricardo Duran, hey Ricky! <laughs> I love Rolla Bailey, Laura Bailey. Uh, also, hi, well, the Laura Bailey come and summon me. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I think we're kind of getting settled on Laura Bailey here. <laughs> and nice to see you here. Guys, if you don't know, Ricky Duran is the newest artist in Saturday AM, and his series will start in issue 113 of Saturday AM, coming out very, very soon. It's our November issue, so we're almost done. And it will be super fun, and it will be the debut of Atlas Article. One of the most popular short stories from this year's Summer of Manga. And yes, I'm totally just putting pressure on Ricky here, because I'm nice. <laughs> but yeah, it, it will be super fun, so be sure to check it out. Um, let's see, Savage Bear Arts. I've been seeing a lot of Blacklash for projects lately. Either games or movies, it's been rough, and I still have my short story unfinished. At least seeing Sunny Draw brings me joy. Well, I'm, I'm happy if <laughs> if it brings you joy and you enjoy the stream and, and my artworks. I am having a lot of fun doing these streams and it really is just relaxing to just sit here and draw and yeah. That's that's the point. We are having fun here. And the next hair is hard to draw, so <laughs> maybe it's not so much fun. I'm not used to her hair. I really like the short hair though. It's pretty cool. It's easier to draw than her longer hair, that's for sure. Although her long hair was really nice too, so... I was kind of sad to see it going. I really like the new style too, but... Yeah, she she was stunning with the long hair. This one's cute, so yeah. Definitely easier to draw. 
Um, I am Ahmed. I know I asked you before, but I forgot what is the app you use for the drumming. Um, this is Clip Studio Paint Pro. So this here. I'm not sure if you can see it. This here. So yeah. Uh, Clip Studio is a software I can absolutely recommend. It's available on everything basically. Not on the Android. Um, but you know, you can get it for Windows, you can get it for iOS, and it is perfect when it comes to comic drawing, and you know, I really like to color with it as well, so... So yeah, hands down the best software I ever used to draw, so I can I can absolutely recommend it. And you know, they, they usually have some really good sales, so you can get it on a fairly cheap price if you're looking at the right discounts. Plus, you know, the what I'm using is the Pro version, so this is the smaller package they have an ex version which has all sorts of bells and whistles animation features and 3d models and stuff like that so you know a bunch of useful stuff but honestly i would never use those so for me the pro is fair enough if you're just want to draw a comic in the traditional style as much as you can do traditional digitally oops then the pro is enough <laughs> <laughs> but of course, I leave it up to you. I mean, it's it's completely up to you which one you want. But yeah, this is the software, and I can recommend it. And this is not sponsored. What do I wish? Please, sales, it's sponsor me. <laughs> um, Magic Card. I have a story pulled out in overview format, but I leave the arc part open for creativity. Um, uh, because uh, I don't have the design for the setting now yet. Yeah, I mean. I, I'm all for, for flexibility when it comes to story. Like, for Saigami, I have the major points in the story planned out. But a lot of things I make up as I go. Like, there are several huge changes in the story that I, I, I never planned. But I was like, oh shit, this is working out really well. Like, I really want to work this into the story. I want to use this character more and stuff like that. And having that flexibility brought me so much joy and and many of the changes actually were so so well received by the reader as well like uh if you're a reader of saigami um we have this character carly and everyone just loves her and i just lost my mind about that and, oh my god she was supposed to be a throwaway character and and you know i i i just couldn't so you know i mean i, I don't want to spoil anything but yeah, she she turned out to be one of my favorite characters to to work with, and 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 the readers just loved her. So I was like, yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's so much fun, and and I was so happy that I decided to work into the story like that because it it really did work out for the best. Freaking belts! <laughs> Why do they need so many belts? Um, I guess? I know I drew her jacket like once before, but it was from the side view, so I'm, I'm not even sure if I'm doing it right. Oh well. Um, let's see, Storm Reef. I really do plan to read Haikyuu. The art is so good and I'm not even into sports manga. When I catch up on my reading schedule, I read Haikyuu because the art is just that good. Yeah, it is. Go and read Haikyuu. Like, I cannot recommend it enough. Like, it's hands down my favorite manga ever. Like, of course, there's there's Remaster, which holds a really, really sweet spot in my heart. And usually when people ask me what's your favorite manga, I either say Remaster or Haikyuu. Um, depending on my mood, I guess. But Haikyuu is a must read, like like seriously, and um, and yeah, uh, you you don't have to be into sports or know anything about volleyball. Haikyuu will still do the magic because it it understands very well that sports manga is never really about the sports. The sports is only a tool uh, to tell a story of the character improvement. Like it's you know the main characters are going through improvement and just as much fight as if they were go through like in a fantasy or sci-fi setting or whatever it's just you know it's not in space or on a battlefield but it's it's in on, on the volleyball court but yeah oh my god i yeah i'm such a haiku fanger so 
I know I might be biased and, and I'm always teased by, by, by your CEO Frederick that I'm only reading and watching Haiku for the pretty boys, but that's so not the truth. Like, yeah, the characters are absolutely lovable and I absolutely love them, but the story is so good and it's so well executed. Everything about it is just, yeah. And, and yeah, um, recently there was like a super ballsy move in the manga that just shook the whole fandom and then everyone. Like, like that chapter of Haikyuu became like trending worldwide, I think, because people were just losing their shit that, oh my god, this, this really happened and no one ever seen that coming and oh my god, it was... I know uh, a few weeks before that people were going nuts about One Piece about something. I don't know what it was because I, I, I'm not reading One Piece anymore, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, that movie in Haikyuu was just... yeah. <laughs> I'm still not over that. Uh, so yeah, I absolutely recommend it, and yeah, y you won't regret it, believe me. Uh, the anime is actually really good too, like, the anime is probably one of the best uh, Shonen Jump anime adaptations. Of course, you know, now we do have Demon Slayer, which is also a really good adaptation. Um, but Haikyuu is, is really good, like, incredible animation, very good voice acting in a Japanese version. The English dub is horrible, though. Like, if you you can, then then yeah, I I I really really wasn't happy about the the English dub, and I haven't seen many people saying that it was good. So so it's probably not just me. <laughs> so so yeah. Um, but yeah, the manga has a really gorgeous art style. And you know, uh, it changes over time. A lot of people are saying that the recent art style is uglier, but I don't think so. It's just simplified. Like, the the creator found a way to, to draw the characters and, and the whole dynamic and the body and everything in, in, a, in, a, in a very interesting way that, that simplifies a lot of things. But I, I actually really love it. Like, it's, yeah, you could go and with Haikyuu. <laughs> Um, um, Clyde Carpen, add some details and advertise the event Saturday AM X Spectrum Noir, please. Ooh, <laughs> we're using that segue. So, hi guys. <laughs> Do you like markers? Um, so, uh, Spectrum Noir, if you're not familiar with it, is a brand of markers. And I actually have. Um, I'm not sure how many, but I, I do have personally a lot of, well, a lot of, compared to my marker account. Uh, Spectrum Noir markers, uh, they are this very high quality, but still affordable markers. Uh, they have different brands, they, I mean, not brands, but types. So there are the uh, Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers, which have the brush nib and uh, the chisel tip. And now Spectrum Noir started to distribute their newest model, the Spectrum Noir Classic markers, which have this. Um, but the nib is not a brush tip, but it's a very interesting bullet nib, which still works very, very well and the ink is very high quality. So for me, the classic, uh, not just the classic, the, the Spectrum Noir markers are like the best affordable alternative to Copics. I know that people are losing their shit about Copics and um, and yeah, Copics are usually the best, but the Spectrum markers are so good. I really love to work with them and the ink is beautiful. It blends so well. And um, yeah, we actually have a very cool contest going on right now with Saturday M and Spectrum Noir. I think the application for you is over now. But we have some super exciting things coming, and this won't be the first thing we do with Spectrum Noir. And um, and yeah, these markers like are super cheap compared to Copics or other more expensive markers like the Napa Pico markers or the Touch markers. So the Spectrum Noir markers are hands down the best deal that you can get for this quality of markers. So I can absolutely recommend them. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not doing that much marker art anymore because I'm mostly working digitally, but I'm still super happy with them and, and yeah, working with them is, is a lot of fun and, and yeah, I, I can absolutely recommend it and stay tuned for the news about the competition.
it will be super fun. Especially if you follow Saturday and you know that we have these crazy competitions like March Art Madness and stuff like that. We have some good stuff coming, so it'll be very, very exciting. And um, yeah, we, we have some more events and details coming, so stay tuned and you know, be sure to follow Saturday on social media. And um, you know, we're also announcing things in the magazine, so you might want to consider subscribing. Also, subscribers usually get extended deadlines to applications and submissions and stuff like that. So it comes with a lot of perks as well. Can I see the belt? Plus, you know, there's the magazine and the support of creators. Um, which means a lot. Like, you know. <laughs> the comic industry is very hard, so... Yeah, reaction of support means a lot to all of our creators, believe me. Um, Harukami Art. I hope it's not a problem at all, uh, but I wait for the new versions. Yep, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we have this on the way. Um, yeah, we, we had some announcements about those, but stay tuned for more. We're, we're working our hardest with the new versions, and, and it's a lot of work, uh, a lot of things aren't easy. There's a lot of things going on, but stay tuned because we have a lot of exciting things coming. Yeah, no. Maybe no. Maybe no nice shape here. I could just rotate the canvas, but I just need to rotate in my head. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, let's see. Uh, where was I? I? Can't see <laughs> where I was. Oh my god, I'm so far behind on everything. Oh my goodness. Okay, maybe I will catch up a little bit with the comments. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess. Holy moly. Yeah, there I was. Um, Ayan Ahmed, the artwork of Haikyuu reminds me of Welcome to the War on the anime. Um, well, the animation studio was the same, so I think the character designer for the anime was the same as well. Haikyuu came first, though, so... Haikyuu did it first. <laughs> um, magic art, but once I do... I have to design dance for the environment. I'm gonna go for for it. Got chapter one, chapter two maps um, out already. I also another setback is I'm not confident in my consistency and English shots. Well, practice, practice, practice. I know that's what people hate to hear the most, but that's the truest advice I can ever give. And you know, confidence comes as you go. Like, no one is confident at first. Well, there are people who are super confident at first. And, um, yeah, I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole, but, um, confidence will come, and even if you're already doing it, you will never be 100% confident. Like, I'm still having so many doubts about the story, the artworks. I, you know, I, I just just go on Instagram and see a 16 year old do better art than I do, and I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> but, you know, the, that's it. Um, don't don't chase the perfection. Just just do it to your best of your abilities, and you know what you have will show that that's your current best level. And there's there's no shame in that. So so yeah, and confidence will come. Uh, Kagami sports manga are my favorite kind of manga. Yeah, I hear you there. <laughs> Uh, Storm Rave Crook on a basket is probably my favorite. Yeah, it was really good. I, I really enjoyed it. Even though I'm absolutely not into basketball, so I was kind of not like, yeah, well, let's see this. But yeah. Um, although I, I I never finished the anime. I mean, not the anime, the manga. Uh, but Kuroko, I never read the sequel manga. But, um, but yeah. It was pretty good too. Uh, Rook Spectral, love the music you have in the background, by the way. 
Well, um, half of my playlist, like the song that is currently playing too, is from The Amazing Madness. Um, I have his links in my video description and in my channel and profile as well. He's an amazing composer. He actually did a complete album inspired by Saigami. Like, they have character themes for Saigami main characters, as well as the Saigami main theme I used for a bunch of my videos. And it's also available on Spotify and other stuff. So, if you're enjoying it, Please check him out because he's incredible and he, he deserves all the support. So so yeah. I can I can absolutely recommend his music. And the other half of the music is just from the YouTube Royalty Free Library, so those are cool too, <laughs> I guess. Uh, yeah. Um Storm Reef. Haiki might be my second if it's as good as everyone says it is. It is as good as it is, believe me. <laughs> like, it, it, it really is up to the hype. Um, Kagami, I'm about to get a bowl of Kuropanabaski soon and also Haikyuu. That's cool, that's cool. I, I, I will need to catch up on the Haikyuu volumes as well. Like, I only have the first few volumes and, and volume 16 because volume 16 is hands down my favorite on so many levels. Like, that's my favorite cover for the manga series and that had one of my all-time favorite moments. And oh my god, I just love that for him so much. Um, Rook Spectre, since you mentioned what key skills do you think you need to start in order to do a one-shot comic manga? Well, um, there's a lot, like, you know, there are the basic skills, like, you know, know how to draw body and, 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 and basic anatomy, uh, basic composition, um, basic knowledge on perspectives and know how to execute backgrounds as well. So there's a lot of things when it comes to basics in comics. Um, and it can be like super overwhelming at first because there are just so many things going into the planning of a, of a chapter. Um, but you know, first of all I would say just, just, just start doing it and there are a lot of things that you can figure out as you go. Like when you first start you probably won't really know what what is your storytelling style? What is your paneling style? What is your art style in general? Like those are things that will develop and improve as you go. So don't get too lost in, in trying to improve um, in every area because you can't. Like hell, I I never received a proper education in art. And I, I just started it and of course it was horrible. It was horrible for years. I, I still have a lot of things I'm not confident about. There are still a lot of things I can improve in a lot and a lot. I'm still learning about a lot of things. But that's just as it, as it is. I, you, you just need to do it, otherwise you will, you will get stuck and you won't make any progress. So, just start doing it. Um, Kagami, I am bro, just getting the volumes because I'm a fan. Uh, on second anime of Haikyuu, I finished Kuropanabaski. Kisa Ryota is the guy. <laughs> oh yeah, I love Kisa. <laughs> um, Ayan Ahmed, that is the coolest, y'all. <laughs> uh, Storm Rave Pass, so we're all just forgetting about our Gashi. Yeah, like, hell, every single one of the characters in Kuroko are, like, cool. Like, <laughs> I, I really enjoy the cast in Kuroko. But I think they got nothing on the cast of Haikyuu, so... Yeah. Um, okay, this is a lot of Kuroko talk, so I'm not gonna go into that because, yeah, I need to catch up on these comments. Uh, Rogue Spectrum, uh, yeah, you love Rave Master. I love the series so much. I think it was my first series and I read it all the way through. Yeah, like, Rave is, is such an all time favorite of mine. Like, oh my god, it has so many flaws. And I still love it to this day, and um, and yeah, it, it it was one of my inspirations for Saigami as well, and it's still today. And, and you know, when when I don't feel confident enough in my art, or if, am I improving enough? Am I good enough? Or stuff like that, you know, the, the usual artist stuff. <laughs> I just go back and read the Great Monster, and I'm like, you know, just seeing his improvement on those pages. Like seriously, look at the first few volumes of Great Monster, and I'm like, yeah, no, my artwork is fine. <laughs> But still, the story had so much heart in it that I absolutely love it. Like, it had so many cliches, so many mistakes in art and, and writing, but it had such heart. 
that I absolutely love it. And uh, it had some really, really great twists and drama and character moments. And like thinking about a few scenes, I'm still getting goosebumps to this day. And and I'm pretty sure Ray was like the first manga that made me cry, like by reading. Like I was like, I, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm a crybaby. Like you will, you will catch me crying in movies and anime and all sorts of stuff. But that was the first time I actually cried by what, by consuming something that wasn't audiovisual. So, so yeah, that that was a big moment for me, and I was like, oh, yeah, that 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 still gets me every time, and yeah, I freaking love rave. I really do love fairy tale as well, um, a lot. Even though we all know that fairy tale isn't perfect either, and you know it has. <laughs> Fairy Tail has some serious issues as well, because after a while fan service get out of hand and, you know, it is what it is and I'm, I'm not against it, um, you know, I, I read and watched quite a few things with fan service and I can deal with it in Fairy Tail, but there were moments when I'm like, just like, yeah, no, this is now over the line. Um, but yeah. Uh, Fairy Tail had some really, really great moments, and it, it 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 did bring back that sort of Fairy Master feeling with a lot of heart. Uh, what I wish was that Fairy Tail had more balls, because next to the heart, what Fairy Master had was the balls. Like, yeah, <laughs> I I I did not see some of the things coming in that manga. And I was like, yeah, this, this is awesome, and and I really wish. That fairy tale would have taken more risk in in that aspect as well. So they did not. So that was a tiny bit of a letdown, but still, I, mean, I still love it. So yeah. Um, a bit more Kuroko. <laughs> um, Storm Ray Remaster was my first thing, and I love it to this day. Yeah, I agree. It wasn't my first, uh, but yeah, I think it was a first for for many. Um. And I think it's it's a good starting point. Um, Kagami, I know the chapter of One Piece. It was big, man. Oh shoot, I'm this far behind <laughs> on the conversation. Yeah, uh, I I know that it was like a huge moment. Um, but since I stopped reading the manga, I I gotta admit I looked into the chapter, but I had no idea what's going on. Like. I kind of got the idea, but since I fell out of the wall, world building and lore and who's who, I just couldn't keep up with the characters. So I was like, I guess this is big. <laughs> no, this is, I was like, yeah, okay, I guess. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know, for me, One Piece just lost its charm, so it was sad because it was so exciting to see that people are going nuts over it, but I just couldn't enjoy it, so yeah, it happens. Um, Storm Ray, One Piece had two particular story arcs before the time skip the very amazing. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Um, I used to be a huge One Piece fan. Like, I absolutely loved it. And One Piece was like the huge favorite for me um, before the time skip. And after this time, time skip was just, 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 just fell out of it as, as we went on. Like, it had some moments, but none of the moments were the same or, or did not have the same effect on me as the previous arc. Like for me, hands down, the Anis Lobby arc was my favorite and I I still absolutely love that arc in the story. But after that, nothing ever really was as exciting about One Piece. So I don't know, maybe the Anis Lobby arc and and, you know, sending off Mary um, was such a high bar that you just couldn't step over it. Even with the wall, Mary Jo and, and with Ace, and it just didn't hit us hard anymore. So, I don't know, maybe the issues with me, I don't know. Uh, Storm Rave, there's so much foreshadowing and build up. I guarantee most of the high moments wouldn't be as high if most of the previous arcs were rushed. Yeah, and. Uh, you know that that's that's an, a very interesting thing because I I read a bunch of tweets about it that so much were were 
foreshadowed and you know a bunch of things are just now gaining sense that, oh yeah so this is why we, we've seen this character or this is why that happened and stuff like that and that is quality writing there but at the same time you know given we have to wait so much time between ours i just don't even remember these characters anymore oh yeah that happened did it uh, I, i'm not even sure like for me the biggest issue with one piece was always that it had just too much characters and and yeah after a while i was like do i care about these characters do i need to remember them and and, and i know that that's like re lazy reading on my end but at the same time it, it just felt too overwhelming um Rook Spectre, never got into One Piece, don't really like the art style or Luffy. I have seen bits and pieces which are cool, however. <laughs> it's kind of funny because uh, I was like that first too, when I first seen the One Piece anime in, in German. And I was like, yeah, I don't really like the art style. And um, I, I didn't know much about the characters at all, so at first I, I didn't watch it. And... Um, and uh, then people were recommending it, and I was like, okay, you know what, Let, let's give this a try, and, and I got hooked on. But not immediately, like, I think the story was already in, like, the third or fourth arc, like, the Arlong arc, was that arc that made the magic for me. Because until that point I was like, yeah, it had its moments. Uh, but that was the first time I was like, okay, now I'm invested in these characters and I absolutely love this show. So, so yeah. Where's my cursor? I had saving, okay. Um, Harukami, are the German dub of Haiku is also really bad. I must say it's so simple and stylized for me because I really like the style of the first three anime seasons. Oh, I never actually checked. The German dub for IQ. Now that's something I really want to look into. <laughs> Although that's pretty bad if it's it's not that good, so yeah. Um Amanita Tara Bali, I'm probably butchering your name, sorry. Um New Slav Art. I do. <laughs> um many different levels. Uh Stormy One Piece is my ghost under for making manga. Um that's a good thing. I mean, yeah, one piece is <laughs> It's surely outstanding. Um, Sokita, I don't know. I think One Piece is a story that should have ended years ago, but that's my opinion. Yeah, it's kind of going on for forever. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who just fell out of it. So, who knows? I, I think it all will come down to how it ends. Maybe it really needed all this build up and all these happenings. Like, I, I read that apparently this current arc has a lot to do about how this tree will end. And I'm already afraid of that because, oh my god, <laughs> I, I couldn't keep up with this arc, so... So I kind of wonder... Um... Um... Uh, comics? Uh, hey Sunny, how are you? I have very important news for everyone about Kappa. I read the law with my lawyer boyfriend. Uh, Kappa does not apply to general audiences. This means if your content is for kids and adults, Kappa cannot sue you. Huh. That's interesting. That's actually good to know. Because, yeah, that's... It's, it's a quite a disturbing change. And, um... Honestly, I really wasn't sure what to do with it, because... You know, you, you kind of have to set your videos on your channel that is it for kids, is it not for kids? And I'm like, well, it could be for kids. I mean, you know, I have a lot of videos that are basically just me drawing. That's something even a kid could enjoy, you know, they could learn from it. Of course, I have some videos and some streams that are probably not meant for kids. Like, um, I know I shouldn't, but I probably said some words in this stream a few times and I'm sorry about that. But... But yeah, so that's probably not for a kid, but, you know, it, it's a very, 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 very huge matter, but that's good to know that basically it's... I cannot be sued then, I guess. 
Um, but you know, the concern is that YouTube can be flagging the videos as it's for kids, it's for not. And you know, a lot of people will probably lose their livelihood um, with this. So that's, that's just crazy. So yeah, it's, it's weird. At the same time, you know, I understand that they want to protect children, but yeah, I'm not sure if that will work. So we'll see how it will turn out. Um, Kagami, oh yeah, I remember seeing a bit by a lawyer about that today. Mini comics, I leave the link for that actual law. Okay, thank you, thank you. Well, that's that's really good to know. Um. Rook Spectre, I probably gave up on One Piece too early. Oh, that could happen. Like I said, at first I, I absolutely gave up on it because I didn't buy the R silence. I think my laptop is lagging, so... Where was I in the comments? Shoot, where was I in the comments? <laughs> oh my god. Where am I? Oh my goodness, where am I? So many comments. Um, I'm getting there. <laughs> the chat just scrolled them to the beginning and I'm still scrolling and scrolling and scrolling back and I'm still not at the place where I left off, so... <laughs> I don't need to catch up. Um... How do bigger YouTubers keep up with these streams? <laughs> I don't even have that many people and I can't keep up with the comments. I mean, it's just a good thing, but at the same time, like, shoot. Um, okay, so to make things easier, I'm gonna skip a bit on One Piece. Um, Kagami, uh, confidence. You start off really confident, you get better, and you get really turned down in confidence, then you get better, then you get gain it back lower than at first. Yeah, it's <laughs> confidence can be like a roller coaster, that's for sure. Uh, Storm Reef, hey Sunny, what makes a fight in a manga interesting to you? Is it the choreography, the intensity, the location, or the stakes? Definitely the stakes. That's like the most important. Like, sure, you can you can enjoy the choreography and, and the hype and all that stuff. Um, well, Ruby will be a good example for that because you know there were fights that are just like, oh my god, this is looking so really cool, this is really cool. But at the same time, on the long term, or if I really want to get into a fight, I need those stakes. I I need to resonate with the characters, I, I want to understand what's going on, what are at stake, so for me definitely is the stake and, and I always recommend uh, when people ask me about you know how to do a fight scene the right way and all the stuff, it's it's all about the stakes. Uh, Many comics, I can tell you more information on DM if you want, but as for now it is written in the couple a lot that general audiences won't be heard. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, if you could send me that DM via Instagram or y you know where to find me, uh, I would really, really appreciate that. And thank you, thank you. Um, also, guys, don't forget that Millie also has a YouTube channel, so check her out. <laughs> Female creators. <laughs> um, T, the artist T, practice makes perfect. Um, that is how it is. Even I know there is room to improve in my own artwork. I will not deny it, lol. Well, there is this room for improvement for everyone like plus you know you will have days off like when you're just not that good and you will have days when you're completely in a role so it is like that but you know you you just you shouldn't stop learning and practicing um uh magic art what's your favorite snack to munch on while working on art my go-to is sunflower seeds well, <laughs> what I have right now is some jelly beans. Um, although I really shouldn't because I'm not supposed to eat sugar things. Um, but for the record, it's been here for like a month and a half. So yeah, I, I really like 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 jelly stuff and gummy bears and stuff like that. And um, I also really like like M&M's, chocolate. But I never really 
eat too much of it. So it's not like I'm just gonna destroy uh, a bag of MMs in Mago. On the contrary, like usually get me a bag of MMs and it will last me two months. <laughs> so so yeah, I just yeah. I, I would go for whatever. You know, sometimes I like salty snacks. Um nothing that gets my hands dirty. So yeah, usually I just I just prefer like these kind of candies, something that, that lasts. Um, because yeah, especially when, when I'm inking. Uh, when I, I ink, I often just, just get a candy in my mouth or something, or, or you know, sometimes I just, <laughs> if, if I had like a popsicle or something, I, ju I just keep that in my mouth, um, like the, the stick of the popsicle or something, because I, I just need something in my mouth, because whenever I, I focus, I, I often like bit my lips or chew my mouth, so... <laughs> So yeah, that that's why I that's why I really like to have these candies because it helps me focus, I guess. <laughs> so so yeah, it's it's not really my my craving for snacks as much as I just like to have something in my mouth. So I, I just don't bit on my lip that much. Um. Uh. Stormy, I love to try Amanda Oreos, O cereal via I work. I also have dozens of Mountain Dew bottles next to my desk. Oh yeah, I love Mountain Dew as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> JR, do you have a favorite character to draw? Um, well, I really like to draw. Ayumi, I guess. I mean, you know, she's my main character and she can be a lot of fun to draw. She kind of is complicated to draw many times, so so maybe not as much enjoyable. I really love to draw Sean uh, because I'm just calling for happy-go-lucky characters. You know, I, I got into manga drawing with Naruto and, you know, there's a, there's a parallel with Sean and Naruto when it comes to the personality, even with the design a little bit. Um, so definitely that is like super fun, easy to draw. Um, I really like to draw Carly as well. Although her hair since it's long, it's, it's very tricky. And um, there's this another character. It's not... I don't want to give out details. But there's this new character. I can't tell like anything about her just yet but I absolutely love to draw her and um, and I hope that you will like her design as well and you will enjoy her I mean yeah but uh, you, you you will have yeah whatever <laughs> I can't English um, but yeah I'm, I'm really really excited to draw her more and um, yeah hopefully soon you will see her because I'm super, super, super excited and, and yeah, drawing her became a lot of fun. Like, you know, sometimes you just come up with a design and, and you just know that, yeah, this is working and, and I really love this and, and, and you can immediately get it. Like, uh, usually when I have new characters, I just can't get the design like on point right off the bat and I always need to look at reference images and you know to make sure that um you know the design is the same but with this character of course you know for the first one or two artworks I still had to look at the reference image but after a while it just was so natural and I had so much fun drawing her and one of the artworks I drew of her was like hands down the best hair I ever drew like I was so super pleased with that hair. Like, I know I shouldn't like flying all over my own art, but I was like, "Damn, this looks so good!" Like, I I was super pleased because I drawing hair is not my forte. Of course, you know I've been I've been practicing lately and and all that stuff, but that was a glorious moment for me. So, so that girl is one of my favorites to draw for sure. Um, okay, I mean, I like to drink tea. That is all. Well, yeah, yeah, tea is really good. I, I absolutely love tea, and I love tea and coffee. And usually, I have those two when I draw as well. Um, 
Millie Cummings, does COPPA apply to information about children collected online from parents or other adults? Nope. Okay, that's that's good to know. Um, this is Matrophy. What does it take for a manga to be in PM? Like, what is the requirement? Well, in Saturday PM, we're looking for stories that are more mature and more refined. In not just a matter that, you know, we're looking for like R-rated content or stuff like that, but stories that are not so much mainstream, but, you know, are moving on the... How is the matter of thoughts here? Um, like some... Like... Heck, how do I say it? Uh, kind of closer to cult or, you know, it's... Like... Uh, like, if you think about movies, Southern PM would be more of like the, the artist-y movies, I guess, or, you know, some of the movies that... Oh, I really can't English. <laughs> like, that are not necessarily about the excitement or hype, but about the, the deeper stuff and the, the more mature way of thinking and executing stories and stuff like that. Um, if I want to go with Mangalores, then... Saturday AM would be Shonen, would be like Shonen Jump or, you know, Weekly Shonen Magazine and those stuff. And Saturday PM would be the same in magazine, like Weekly Young Jump or um, others. I don't read much Shonen Magazine, so I'm not sure about the other magazines. Um, so, so yeah, th think of it like that. So if, if AM is Naruto, then PM is like Berserk. Well, not so gory. Like, that was a... Not the best example, because we're not exactly looking for the gore. So, that's always a misconception. We're not necessarily looking for, for gruesome, gory content and nudity and all that stuff, but we're, we're looking for, for aesthetics um, with the creators and the artworks that are more mature on that front. Both the artwork and the writing style. Uh, Rock Spectre, thanks again for the tips. This act this has actually been my first stream from you, as it just popped up on my YouTube homepage. Oh, well, that's awesome. Well, welcome to your first stream, and I really hope that it was useful for you, and that you're having fun. Um, story of hey, Sunny, uh, you remember the Ali Risha thing? Other than the art, that's the only thing that bugged me. Uh, Haru Ali is also OTP. <laughs> oh yeah, they are definitely OTP. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember I actually kind of liked that part of the story. Like what they did with the time thing. I don't want to spoil I mean, probably a lot of people already seen or read Remaster here. But if you haven't, I, I, I don't really want to spoil that for you. Um... So yeah, I, I actually like that part of the story. Um, Kagami, I never cried to a manga, but I cried quite a bit to anime. Music can get me to cry all on its own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, music for sure, and, and in anime, like, pff, so many times. Um, yeah, I, it happened with me with manga, like, a few times, actually. So yeah, there was that with Remaster. There was a chapter with Haikyuu that just absolutely ruined me. And it was so awkward because I was reading it at my workplace. Because I used to read manga, I used to draw manga at my workplace. So, you know, that was a cool thing. Perks of being a hotel employee, you get a lot of free time during your shifts. And there was this chapter in Haikyuu and it just hit me in the, the feelings so much. And I was like tearing up and I was just no no I just get it and and this coworker of mine he's he, he's actually the son of my boss and he came to me and I was he was like are you okay are you crying and I'm like well, well yeah but you know it's just he was like what's wrong and I'm like well I, I read this chapter of this this volleyball manga that I really love and he was like so what did the main characters lose or something and I was like no they won <laughs> and they he was like so why are you crying? And I was like, 
because the opponent lost and it was just so devastating for me because I I loved the other team as well but you know I was super happy for the main character but at the same time seeing the other team lose was just so devastating for me and I just couldn't deal with the emotions and oh my goodness I was I was an emotional wreck on that day so so yeah anger can do to me as well But it's rare, of course, with, with anime, yeah, when, when you have, you know, the voice acting, the music on point, it's so much easier to get those tears flowing than with just purely with manga or with books. Um, but, you know, even, even with books it can happen, so... Yeah. I remember reading stuff that, yeah, that was only a book or, or a novel or... <clears throat> Maybe more fan fiction <laughs> that started those tears, so yeah. I'm probably just a crybaby. Um, Spectre, oh my god, yes, I can relate to that so much. I think I got. I might go back to Rave at some point and reread it at some point. I can recommend it, like. <laughs> I, I read it a couple of times, but it's always super fun to go back to. And I still enjoy it up to this day, and it just never really lost its magic for me. So, so yeah. Um, Storm Rave, I cried three times during One Piece. Just three. Well, that's not even that much. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure One Piece needs to cry more times than that. Like. Yeah, definitely more times. Of course, the worst was was absolutely that that scene at the end of the Ennis Lobby's arc with with Mary, and yeah, that still gets me every time. Um, the Reaper of Crows. Fairy Tail is pretty flawed. I tried to get into it, but it's not my favorite. Well, I guess it's not for everyone. I mean, yeah, <laughs> even if you know that it's flawed, it it is what it is. Uh, funny thing that yeah, um, it took me two tries to get into Fairy Tail. Like um, at first. Um, and I read it that, oh yeah, this is new manga from the creator of Rave Master. And I was like, oh, cool, let's look into this, because, you know, I, I absolutely love Rave Master. And after Rave Master, the first chapters of Fairy Tail just felt so silly, and I just couldn't connect with it. And, and I was like, yeah, this has nothing what I liked in Rave, and, and I, I really couldn't get into it. And um, it, it already had an anime when I was giving it a second chance, and um, yeah, I, I, I give it a try because I really enjoy the music, like the music was, was absolutely amazing uh, for Fairy Tail in my opinion, and that was probably one of the strongest points in the anime. Um, so I was like, okay, okay, well, let's, let's give this a try, and, and, um, and yeah, it, it took me uh, several episodes to really get into it, like, I was like, okay, well, this won't ever be as serious as Rave, but, you know, maybe I can enjoy it. And, and you know, I, I got to appreciate some of the jokes, especially after Erza showed up. And, you know, it was like, yeah, well, this is fun. Um, so I was having my fun with it. And um, I got hooked on, on Fairy Tale uh, during the Phantom arc. So that was like, I don't know, like a good 20 or 30 episodes in, I'm pretty sure. Because, yeah, they have several arcs there. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. At least 30 episodes in. But yeah, and, and they they had that, that moment there. That just got me hooked and I was like, yes, this is this is what I was looking for. Um, um Yeah, I, I'm not gonna spoil which moment, but probably pretty much almost everyone's seen or read it or or whatever. Uh, the part with the tower with Lucy. Uh, and I absolutely love that scene, and, and that just hit the right notes, and I was like, yeah, I, I'm in this for 
for good now. And, and from then on, it actually got better and better with every arc. Like, I, I still think that one of their best arc is uh, the Tower of Heaven, with Erza's past and everything. That was that was really good. And, um, and yeah, a bunch of arcs later on were really, really good too. Uh, so, so, yeah. I know it's flawed, it's it's really not for everyone, like I understand that not everyone loves it and it has a lot of flaws. And the enemy got worse with time, like the animation was getting worse and worse as we went on and they were also censoring a lot of things. So definitely the manga was better. Um, let's see, I'm gonna save and we try to catch up more of these comments. <laughs> I don't know, this feels like a mission impossible. Um, Rogue Spectre may be not full on cry, but it hit me quite a few times, so did Fairy Tale, to be frank. Yeah, Fairy Tale definitely did for me too, like. I, 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 I full on cried on the manga, I mean, on the anime a few times. On the manga, I, I'm not sure. Maybe, can't remember. Sorry, people had on fairy tale, but you know what? I forgive it because the art is great, the characters are fun, and friendship is magic. Oh, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Better Robin, Sagami! Yay! <laughs> um. The Reaper of Crow. Also, I swear there's always a blue-haired guy with a face tattoo in all of the manga's work. Yeah, I, don't know, I love him. <laughs> like, he might be one of my reasons I, you know, <laughs> I absolutely love that character. Um, in all of his works, actually. Um, yeah, that, that, that's a weird thing, actually, with, with Hiro Mashima, that he, he just loves to reuse his designs and the ideas and, and you know, in all of his stories you will have Ethereum, you will have someone who looks like Z-Card, Z-Green, Jalal, you name it. Um, I, I can't remember his name from Eden Zero and, and a lot of floors um, he, he's using again and again and again and, and, you know, for some it's super annoying. I actually got to enjoy it, so I don't know, it's kind of fun for me. Um, Reaper of Crows. One Piece is kind of like Harry Potter, where it starts out in such a magical way and later on it becomes this big epic story. That's an interesting comparison. But at least Harry Potter was way shorter <laughs> than One Piece. Uh, Rogue Spectre, as for, my, as for me art-wise, I'm a bit of a novice intermediate at art, but I've had a long history with art binges and uh, long periods of just not doing it. But yeah, I need to get a lot better. Well, there's always room for improvement, so... Um, Kagami, honestly, from being an aspiring mangaka, friendship is the greatest thing in the journey of it. Friendship is honestly powerful in real life, at least from what I've seen. Yep, I I won't deny that. Like, yeah, friendship can be sometimes thicker than blood. So, so, so definitely, it's just <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it just becomes kind of comedic when it's always friendship that wins you the battle and. And allows you to do the impossible and things like that. And I think it's a good thing to involve into your stories, but you have to be careful to not to make things feel ridiculous. Or you know, when you're always just relying on friendship powers, then the victory, be it a battle or, or a match or anything, won't feel as well deserved on behalf of the characters. As it could be if, it's, if it was won in any other way. So, once again, it comes back to the stakes, I guess. So, you know, you, you really don't want friendship to take away from those stakes. Slowly shipping up. Um, Sonic Ninja 101 Warrior of Light. Today is the day I get it right. Hey, Sonny. <laughs> yeah. Nope. <laughs> um, Storm Rave. Honestly, Sonny. Honestly, it's people who fall off of One Piece should start reading current chapters, but I would say start from Zoo. Uh, isn't picking up a lot since then. Yeah, I, 
I'm not. I, I think I still read Zoo. That was before the the Volcake Island arc, right? Wait, the Animal Island. Yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, there, there's there's so much, and it's so hard to keep up with all these weekly civilizations. Betty Robin, I love you, White and Jade in Star Style. Well, thank you. I, that's always nice to hear. Um, Reaper of Crows. Yeah, One Piece needs more lore, even though it gets a lot already. Yeah. Uh, Storm Raven in Zoo. Some information about how to find One Piece itself is revealed. Yeah, I don't remember that, so <laughs> I, I think I'm a lost cause when it when it comes to One Piece. Reaper of Crows, do you know what did lose its magic? Dragon Ball. <laughs> oh yeah, don't even get me started on that. Like, oh my goodness, I gave up on Dragon Ball so long ago. Even though I used to love it, like... Dragon Ball was one of my gateway enemies. But surely not anymore. I, I never watched any of the New York series though, and... Not even the movies. It's just lost all of its magic and the fun thing is that it never really had all that magic it just had the hype and we loved it <laughs> even though yeah dragon ball was missing us so many stuff like just think of goku did goku ever have any character improvement like, like uh, let's be honest did he ever like, i i don't really feel so like it's just kind of fun but I guess when you're just enjoying it or just you're in for the fun, I guess it works, but still it's so funny. Um Sokita I'm in Doctor Stone right now, the anime. I haven't read the manga yet. I read quite a few chapters of the manga, but it never did the magic for me. It was too silly for me and yeah, it just wasn't for me. Uh, never even looked into the anime. Savage Weird Arts. I think that's what my problem with Naruto was. Lot of characters. Then again, I didn't watch all the way through, but when I did watch, it was in the filler section. Ah, oh, yeah, the fillers were horrible. I, I think Naruto still did a better job in handling all those characters. Like, sure, there are, there are a bunch of characters I still don't remember their name or who they were and why were they there, why were they important. But I, I feel like it was a bit more focused. Um, Peter Bean, the moral arc is super, it's very decent, but yeah, I agree, super is a bit too much and still like Dragon Ball Charisma. Yeah, I, I don't know which arc it is. Uh, River of Crow, Sunny, have you seen the new Fruits Basket? Uh, yeah, started it. Um, I'm not sure where we left off. I uh, haven't watched the, the full anime just yet. I think it also started about episode 8 or 9-ish, like in July. <laughs> so still have to finish that too. And honestly, this is my first time with Fruits Basket. Like, I never read the manga and never seen the first anime. So for me, this is a whole new experience and I'm I'm honestly enjoying it. It's it's like super wholesome. Um, never will be my favorite, that's for sure, because it's just you know it's just a pleasant anime to watch. I I don't think I can get ever hooked on it that much. I I think I would need a bit more depth for that. But at the same time, you know, it's it's, it's fluff, alright. So <laughs> it's it's nice. I probably would have been really hooked on it if I was reading it like 10 years ago or something when I was more into shoujo manga on that level but yeah I feel like nowadays I need a bit more out of my stories um Devin Hall's which was the series that fell off hard for me all Ichigo started to bore me a lot he became very relevant in my opinion feeling it some more moves and it got boring, gets a little bit old too. Yeah, Bleach had an interesting run. I used to love it. Um, never was my favorite, like, One Piece or Naruto, but it surely had its moments and 
there was a lot of things I enjoyed about Bleach and and yeah, I just yeah. <laughs> I really think that Bleach was also one of the students should have ended sooner. Of course, you know, there was still a lot of things to explore with Ichigo's heritage and and what went down in the final arcs, but but I, I always felt like the series should have stopped. Um Mm, what was it called? Oh shoot. The arc where, where they rescued the Orihime. Um, Uakumundo. Yeah, that's it. I'm probably butchering the Spanish here, but yeah. I, I felt like that after that fight with Aizen, they should have just stopped. Because nothing after that felt exciting or kind of the stakes were lost. And yeah, it was just. I mean, sure, you know, the word was at stake and stuff like that, but. I just wasn't that invested anymore. But yeah, you know, at least. I'm not sure it, it had an ending, so. <laughs> um, one thing that I, 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 I did like about the ending that, you know, Ichigo and Orihimi were my OTP, so I was happy for them, but at the same time, I really would have loved to see the relationship improve a bit or have some development. We, we see some stuff here and there in the chapters, but. Yeah, I, I I I really wish that part of the story, like the characters, were a bit more worked out instead of the fight and all the characters I didn't really care about. So, so yeah, I still kind of wish they would finish the anime though. Like I I probably would watch that. I I did enjoy um, the Bleach anime. It, it had a lot of style and, and had some really good music. I really liked that. Um, Rook Spectre, so yeah, I, once again, oh my god, I'm lost again, <laughs> why does the chat keep scrolling on its own, oh my goodness, oh there I was, no, shoot, I'm still so far behind, no, there it is, okay, so maybe I'm here. Where am I? <laughs> I'm so lost. Uh, Rogue Spectre, so I do have to go and do other stuff. I will come back to see if you're still on. If not, I'll catch up with the stream later. See you later. Enjoy the rest of the stream. Thank you for the advice, by the way. It was very much appreciated. Huh? You're welcome and thank you for joining us for tonight. And hope to see you in my next stream as well. Um, Magic Art, Love Fairy Tale 2. My favorite is Assassination Classroom. Any tips on coming up with the perfect antagonist for your story? Maybe you could do a video on it. Um, well, I I think the antagonist needs to be justified in a way, um, or not. It depends what kind of antagonist you're going for. Like, you can have an antagonist that just like pure evil or you know batshit crazy and 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 you know that could work as well if you build it up well although you know just having an antagonist is just pure evil is kind of boring at some point um so i, I always find antagonists more enjoyable who have a reasoning that makes you think like shoot maybe they are right i can see their point I think that that's that's super exciting when, when an antagonist is is making sense in a way. Like uh, the first that comes to mind is Thanos. Like there are points when I was like, you know, he's making a point here. Like I I, I kind of see what he's going for, and you know, he's not wrong necessarily. Um, I I personally find antagonists like that like super exciting. And it it just gives so much more depth to the story. Uh, then just, yeah, I'm Dr. Evil doing evil things because I'm the evil guy. And, you know, that that's like Disney. <laughs> and um, I, I always enjoy uh, antagonists with more depth. And, you know, more depth doesn't necessarily mean that you have to give a tra tragic backstory uh, to a bad character. Or, you know, not every antagonist needs to be redeemable. Like, sometimes it can be so much better when, when you have a character who's 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 doing wrong things and and you understand why but at the same time you can see a point where they could redeem themselves like that 
to me is, is so much more interesting than just having someone who's just like, yeah, I have a shift of a personality, so I'm doing bad things. Um, so, so yeah, I'm not sure if that helps or not, but that's that's the way I, I, I look at things and that's what I'm aiming for with my antagonists. Um, of course, you know, with different stories, different things work. So yeah, um, I, I also really enjoy stories where in the end you kind of question everything, where you're like, was the antagonist the antagonist or not? <laughs> So, so yeah, but you know, it, it also comes down to like personal taste or the kind of story you want to tell. But I, I always say that not everything needs to be morally white or gray or shoot, no. So, take two. Not everything needs to be white or black morally. Sometimes the gray area is more exciting. And I really can't think English anymore. Um, Salva Karim, the Saturday I'm accept interns again, like artist assistant. Um, I can't say anything just yet. Um, given that the first internship was a huge success, I say that yes, we probably will have more internships going on. But at the same time, I can't say anything just yet. I'm not announcing anything, but stay tuned. Um, once we have more things settled, we will make announcements about different things, so I would say that there's a good chance, so stay tuned. You know, I'm not sure if if we're doing internship again, it will be me again, or it will be some other creator of ours, um, I'm not sure, like, we will, we will touch that question later for sure, so, so yeah, eventually. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not really giving you a proper answer here, but I, I don't have any solid information to give right now. And even if I were, I probably wouldn't be able to, so yeah, there's that. Um, the Reaper of Clothes. Um, you know what I'd like to get better at? Driving wrinkles on clothes. I over exaggerate them whenever I draw clothes. Yeah, that can be tricky. Um, because, you know... Learning those is super easy when you draw from real life, but at the same time, if you want to draw like in comic or manga style, you, you need to find that fine line that is not super realistic, but still looks like proper wrinkles in the clothing. Um, so yeah, I, I think that comes down to a lot of style and practice as well, so it's just ju just practice and you know, maybe, maybe look at the the style of the artists you you love and you know you enjoy their works and 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 study those artists and how they do those wrinkles. That's that's pretty much what I did. Like I wanted to aim for a simple style, so I, I did a lot of uh, study on different things and, and you know um, you also need to learn about the different kind of fabrics. Like uh, leather will look completely different, like satin, for example. So so there's a lot of learning to do there as well. So you, you kind of need to understand what you're driving at the same time. So, But that is something you can only learn from from like live driving or, you know, driving. Yeah, you, you get my point. Sorry, I'm getting tired here. <laughs> kind of losing my train of thoughts. And I wanted to color this. Like, I so overestimated myself here. <laughs> um... Uh, da, 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 da. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gonna skip a few comments that are just basically answering um, some of the topics so I can I can really catch up with these comments. Um, Harukami Art, how long will your stream be? Oh, that's a good question. Like, I just looked at the clock and we're getting closer to the three hour mark. So it probably won't go on for, for, for too much longer because I'm. I'm I'm kind of getting tired here. Like it's almost 1 a.m. for me. Uh, plus I'm, uh, I'm I'm kind of starting to lose my my voice and my ability to English. <laughs> so I, I think I'm just gonna catch up with the comments here and then probably finish things up. I mean, at least I have a refined sketch. 
Yeah, I still will need to ink and color this, but at least I have something. <laughs> and I'm kind of happy how this turned out. Like, they don't necessarily look like my style, but yeah, this is interesting. I love Ruby, Ruby so yeah, gotta catch up with those comments. Um, Mill Comics, thank you for being so lovely. Well, you're welcome. I mean, come on. <laughs> Um, Reaper of Crows, Sunny, you should eat some roasted nuts or trail mix. Protein is a great snack. Yeah, I, I actually love those, That's especially like almonds and those those smoked nuts. Like, those, those are really good. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't eat, eat too much like nuts and seeds and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kagami, Sunny's gonna be reading this text in like 20 minutes. Oh my god, I, I probably am. Like, I kind of wish this had like timestamps to know that how far behind I am in these comments. Um, Harukami, by the way, I'm doing the Hubember again this year, and today was it Juvia I drew for? Oh, that sounds exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna check it out. Hubember is actually pretty cool. Like, I kind of find it more interesting uh, than Inktober. Because, yeah, it's, it is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, what is Hugh Amber? Uh, it's like Inktober, but instead of uh, black and white drawings, you do a drawing in a hue, which is a set for the day. Yeah, and I think in that way it's kind of more challenging because you kind of need to understand color theory or what works and whatnot. So it kind of gives you a bit more experimentation than Experimental? Is that even a word? Probably not. <laughs> so anyway, it, it, it kind of forces you to do things a bit more than Inktober, probably. I mean, you can do a lot of crazy stuff with Inktober as well, but when I first seen Hugh Amber artworks, I was like, yeah, this is super challenging, especially if, you know, you're not completely understanding color theory or you're not that good with coloring. It can be a very exciting thing. Uh, Sava Karim, what's your favorite tool in Coop Studio? Well, I'm gonna move this to the side a bit. What I really like... Okay, so I really like this pencil tool, but this is not uh, a built-in thing in Coop Studio. This is actually a pencil I purchased um, from a custom package, so I can say this. Uh, I really like the paneling tool and the ruler tool. Those are like super useful and they are saving my life so many times when I'm drawing comic. I I, I really absolutely love that tool. I really like uh, the oil paintings. These are custom, like these are uh, the basics that come with Clip Studio, I think. Uh, but if you go to the Clip Studio, uh, you can download a few free stuff. And I absolutely love this flat oil brush. Like this have become my go-to coloring tool and I absolutely love it so so yeah I think I would say this oh and and the lasso fill like the lasso fill is a godsend like that makes coloring so much easier it is just beautiful I absolutely love it <laughs> so yeah probably this and these are also the tools I use the most as well um Reaper of Crows, hey Sunny, are there any Sayami who aren't human? Uh... <laughs> well, <laughs> this is the question where if I answer that, oh, answering this would be spoiler, then you know that, yeah, there are. And if I answer that, yeah, there are, it's already a spoiler and so on. So I guess, yeah, there are. <laughs> Like, it's a true question. Seriously. Um, I already answered this probably with my train of thoughts because I obviously not gonna lie. Like, I mean, is it okay to lie if you're trying to prevent spoilers? <laughs> That's the moral question of the day. Um, keep reading, please. <laughs> the manga and. Uh, well, 
if you read chapter 4 already, then you have an idea that in the world of Saigami, there are a lot more species. Yeah, that's the right word. Than humans. And if you just read that huge dump of exposition, I guess that is chapter 4, about how the Saigami came to be and the Astra born and stuff like that, then you kind of really have an answer that, yeah, there are Saigami who were necessarily human to begin with. So there's that. Um, how does it affect the story going forward? Please read and find out. <laughs> Eventually, I will be getting there. Sooner or later. <laughs> Probably not in this volume, although... Just, just, just keep reading. Oh, I'm getting into my spoilers here. Um, Stormrave, if uh, Ayumi and her friends were Power Rangers, what season would they be from? That is a question I cannot answer because I don't know anything about Power Rangers. Like, I know, I I grew up in the 90s, so I, I should know all about Power Rangers, but I never ever in my life seen any episodes of Power Rangers. So, I don't know. <laughs> no idea. Uh, to be fair, Power Rangers always look kind of stupid to me, so yeah, I, I don't know. I, I leave up. that's up to your imagination, I guess. And and I apologize to all the Power Rangers fans, and, and I'm so sorry. But yeah, it was never part of my life, so... And I guess it's too late for me now for that, so... Um... Harukami Art. I'm actually working with someone in a manga about the double tennis team. Oh, that, that sounds cool. I I never been into tennis, but I love sports manga for me, so... Um, Sokita, uh, Sunny, do you have any specific music you listen to as you draw? I listen to jazz. Oh yeah, I do. Um, there are... Um, so I have different playlists. Uh, I have playlists that are purely for storyboarding. Because whenever I do my storyboards, I cannot listen to anything that has a lyrics. Because it just breaks my concentration. I can't focus on dialogues when I, I, I listen to something that, that has lines that I understand. It works if it's music that I don't understand. So sometimes that works, but... But if I understand the lyrics, or at least parts of the lyrics, like, uh, you know, uh, whenever I'm listening to Japanese music, I don't understand everything, but I understand enough that it is already distracting to me. So, whenever I'm doing the storyboards, I usually just listen to instrumental music. And often I, I, I set the mood um, for the chapter or the scene that I'm, I'm, I'm working on. Like, you know, if it's, a, if it's like a fight scene or something epic, then, you know, I will go to YouTube and I will be like, well, give me eight hours of epic instrumental inspiration and music. And, you know, there will be a bunch of mu movie soundtracks and stuff like that. Um, or, you know, uh, when I really just want to focus on Saigami and the characters, I I go to Madness's uh, Saigami album and I just put that on repeat and I just listen to that. Um, I also do have inspirational playlists that help me think up things and uh, help me get into the mindset of creating Saigami or other projects. Um, so I actually do have a Spotify list for that, um, that, that I either listen to before I start drawing or during drawing. Um, I also have uh, another place for another project. I'm, I, I will talk about that later, not now. I, I just can't just yet. Um, so I have that playlist. I have a single on playlist <laughs> that um, is actually helping a lot whenever I'm inking because inking can be kind of boring. Like, you know, for sketching, I need the concentration mostly because I need to 
basically create the artwork. But whenever I'm inking, I'm just going over the lines. So it doesn't come with as much uh, brain work. It's just, you know, I just, I just need to do it. I just need to grind and grind and grind. And for that, it can help a lot if I'm, I'm just singing along to songs. So, <laughs> so I, I have that. Um, that playlist, I recently put it together, it has a lot of German anime openings because that's what I grew up with, so there's the nostalgia strong with that. Um, so yeah, I, I have uh, a lot of different playlists and, and I go to the playlist that I think fits the mood the most or I, I need the most um, to set work I'm, I'm working on. Um, so, so yeah, I actually have a lot of fun with music and, and I absolutely need music whenever I'm drawing. So that, that's not an option, I'm not just gonna draw in silence. Like, even if I'm, I'm drawing in the middle of the night, I will have my headset on and I need my music in, in order to draw. And um, yeah, I, I listen to a lot of different kind of musics. Uh, jazz, for example, is, is absolutely not my jam. I, I tend to be more on the alternative rock side, so when it comes to classic music, or you know jazz, blues, and things like that. Uh, that's not really my thing, uh, but but yeah, love me love me some rock. So so yeah, that's. But you know you will find some random stuff in my playlist. Like holy moly, <laughs> some of my my song choices are totally random. Um, Reaper of Crows. I'm working on a martial arts manga. Hopefully Saturday I will accept it. Oh, that sounds exciting. Well. You know, um, we have a lot of options. We have Summer of Manga, we have Saturday Submit. So, give it a try and I wish you good luck. Um, I'm gonna skip a few comments there because it seems like it's just. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> It was just too exciting to watch me just sit here and look at the screen. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, uh, River of Crows. Sunny, did you get into Haikyuu because of the story and the characters? Or the sport? Um, kind of both. I mean, I, I do enjoy volleyball a lot. Like, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of volleyball. Um, I enjoyed playing volleyball when I was in high school. Of course, it was never my sport because I'm like super short. So even for a libero, I was super short. So, um, so yeah, I, I was intrigued by the idea that, oh yeah, volleyball manga, that, that could be interesting. Um, but it was the characters, like absolutely. Like after I read the first chapter, I was like sitting prayer, just please let this manga survive in jump because it is so good, like, just the first chapter had so much heart and it felt so different already. Um, like, I think one of the best thing in Haikyuu is that although it has the typical shonen manga rivalry, it never forgets about sportsmanship. And that was something I absolutely adored about the writing of Haikyuu that it had so much heart um, in that aspect that, you know, in, in sports manga you will see often that the opponent team are antagonized in order to make the stakes higher or, or you know, have, have the winners go up against the mean team and stuff like that. And that is never the case in Haikyuu because in Haikyuu most of the times you will sympathize with the opponent teams just as much as with the main characters. And everyone has their own story on the court and and oh my god, it's just done so well and and Haikyuu never lost that feeling of sportsmanship and pff, just love it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh Reaper of Crows, I usually like the characters and know nothing about the sports. Uh, yeah, and you know, that that's how it's supposed to be. A good sports manga is always about the characters and not about the sports. Of course, you know, if, if you can learn about the sports, like, I learned about baseball from manga, basically. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, but you know, I needed some basic knowledge. Like, when I first started to watch Ace of Diamond, I didn't understand anything because I never in my life seen baseball because baseball is not a thing in Hungary. 
So it was actually after my first actual baseball match. Like when I was in Canada, we went to see a baseball match. And I got the basic rules explained to me, and I was like, aha, uh -huh. so that's what the game is about. So I went back to Ace of Diamond and I was like, okay, now I understand what's going on and I give it a second try. So so yeah, it's you know it's 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 not bad. I, I did enjoy that uh anime as well. Uh the manga is pretty cool too. Um but at the same time I didn't like the idea that I just couldn't get into it because I, I like the knowledge about the sport. So I, I think it always should be about the characters. Um, so, Gita, speaking of sports, I'm gonna try to look at a hero Asura today. Um, that's a new basketball manga, I mean, anime, I think. I actually might be looking into that, but not with them soon. But yeah, I, I will save it for the future if, if it's that. I think there's also like a tennis anime this season that seems to be pretty good. Um, and yeah, if, if you love sports sports anime that's a bit more serious, I absolutely recommend Run With The Wind. Like, that was, like, this year, I think? Yeah, probably, yeah. This year's, like, most pleasant surprise for me. Because it's it's about running, like, how can you make running exciting? And, and oh my god, it was such a beautiful anime. It was really good. Um... Okay, trying to catch up. I knocked over something. Whatever. Uh, Dog Samson, hello. What is this? I got me a live stream of someone driving and having trouble catching up in the chat. That's so great. <laughs> um, Storm Rave. Uh, the scene that made me fall in love with Ray Master was when Zeekhart attacked Ali and Haru came in to save her. That stuff hit me in the feels. Oh yeah. I have to be on board with that. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was for me too. Like, yeah. That was the first strongest arc in Ray Master, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Sava Karim is. Is it the same process to submit a manga to Saturday AM and PM? Like the same email to send files? Well, we're generally one company, so sure. I mean, we have uh, we have different uh, home pages and stuff, but in general, yeah, you, you can apply. Um, basically, uh, don't send files first, though. Like you know, if uh, we have we have started submit. Uh, we have forms uh, to apply through. Plus, you know, uh, we have we have a method to accept uh, submissions and stuff like that. So please don't send us like chapters of your manga and stuff like that. We we receive too much of that stuff. Like first, you you need to pitch things and uh, and uh, do a little bit of research and look into your pitch sessions or how we do things. Because if you just send in stuff, uh, it's very likely that we're 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 not gonna read through it because we just don't have the time or resources to go through everything. Um, um, let's see. Stormy, what made me quit with Dragon Ball was the calf flooding. I don't know what that is. Overcoming, but definitely had one of the best German ops. Am I right, Sunny? Oh my god, yeah, like Dragon Ball has done that. <laughs> like Dragon Ball Z. Uh, the second opening. My goodness, I loved it so much. <laughs> I still know it by heart. <laughs> um. Kagami, that's on Radiant, anyone? Oh, <laughs> yeah, Radiant is uh, is a French manga that uh, received uh, a hype in Japan and also uh, received an anime in Japan. So you know that's a huge accomplishment, and and I, I absolutely love the art style of the manga. And that's it. <laughs> um, yeah, I I only read. Like the first two volumes, 
of the manga and I, I quit the anime after like three or four episodes. Uh, I wasn't overly happy with the writing. But the art style, is, I absolutely love it. Uh, probably will give it a try later because I, I heard that the story gets better and it has some more diversity going on. Um, but to me, the story kind of felt cliche and juvenile for my taste, so we will see. But the art style is gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Um, Once like again, I lost my place in the chat. My god, I'm still so far behind. My goodness. How is this happening? <laughs> I never been this far behind. Um, okay, talk about Naruto and Naruto. I'm sorry, I'm gonna skip through all of these. Maybe that's how YouTubers do it. They don't read all the comments. <laughs> I need to come up with a new system. Um. Also, guys, if you're talking to each other, please use an ad and the username so I know that you're talking to each other and not to me, and that will make my thing easier on catching up. Um, um, me, so Clyde Perpeton, I missed the me who's uh, done some manga strips for part time. Now I switch from making manga to illustrating commissions. Keep up your heart for the manga comics, Sunny. I had lost interest with mine. Yeah, it's it's hard, you know, not everyone is cut out for comics, and you know, it can be very disheartening when you realize that doing comics is a lot of work with very low payments and, um, you know. Usually doing fan art and doing commissions is more benefiting financially and that's just the sad reality. So so yeah. That you know, I I'm not an illustrator, I'm a storyteller. Or at least I like to think I'm a storyteller. <laughs> I definitely want to tell my stories now even more than ever, so so yeah, I I will stick to that dream. Uh, Sava Karim, what brushes do you recommend inking for Clip Studio? Um, for inking... Recently I've been playing around with this real G pen tool. It's interesting, it feels pretty consistent. But what I've been using lately are these custom G pens. Um, yeah, it doesn't have the deer in Japanese, so... I mean... All of them say like G-Pen and stuff, so... Um, but... These two I've been really, really happy with. Um, I wonder if I can find it... Uh, in my downloads. I downloaded them from the Clip Studio, so you can find them among the free... G pens. Um, so yeah, this one is the second one here. So look for this icon. I'm pretty sure this is from Solitaire. <laughs> so maybe you can use that as a reference. So this is the, the second one. This artwork should be this third one. And for the first one, I use that the most. Like that's my go-to inking tool. Um, something a little longer time ago. Yeah, you can get all of these in Clip Studio for free, and that's just beautiful. I absolutely love Clip Studio for that. Um, where was it? Enjoy the music man calling. Oh, these pens were pretty cool too, like, they kind of had a jaggy edge, so I stopped using them, but they were pretty interesting. Um, yeah, this is the one. Like, this. Look for this icon. Uh, this is my, my absolute favorite G-Pen when it comes to inking. Like, this is what I use to ink my manga pages. 
So yeah, I'm gonna leave it here for a little bit longer, so you can look for it. I think if you go like search Japan and check that show the most popular, it will be among the very first search results. So it will be pretty easy to find. Just look for this image. Um, so Kita Takashi Obata style is one of the best out of Shonen Jump manga because yep, absolutely. Um, Hi, Karapatana. Also, please check Numeros on Facebook. The creator truly needs audience. He is now on his third book. Okay, that sounds interesting. Uh, I'm gonna skip through a few of manga talk here. Uh, Storm Race Sunny, I gotta leave a little early. You've been great so far, and I look forward to your next live stream and next installment of Saigami. Also, just withhold information, you don't have to lie, all oh, fake. <laughs> well, thank you for being here, and um, I'm working on the next Saigami, and yeah, I suck with spoilers. <laughs> or keeping up a poker face. <laughs> Whenever I have to hold back information, so yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Kagami360, the feeling you wanna spoil your series and not one at the same time. I know, right? Like, you know, there's so many things I'm so excited about, but at the same time, I like, I can't talk about it. Like, I'm not gonna spoil it. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> so yeah, it's a struggle of creators. <laughs> um, the Reaper of Crows, you should keep that feeling deep inside. I'm doing my best. Uh, try to pick. Uh, yay, she's a Ruby fan. Damn right she is. <laughs> uh, try to pick. No, she's shipping Bumblebee. I'm not even sorry. <laughs> like, I know I understand that everyone's shipping Bumblebee, but I do so much. Uh, you know, uh, that doesn't mean you shouldn't ship whoever you want to ship. I. I, I absolutely understand, and I, I don't intend to go into shipping wars or anything, so please let's leave that out and let's just focus on the fun. Um, try to pick all German covers of anime openings are literally made uh, by the same dude. Oh, kind of true, yeah. <laughs> I did a damn good job. <laughs> Uh, Reaper of Crows, Sunny, would you like to have a Sega video game in the future? Oh yeah, absolutely, that would be fun. Like, you know, there could be like different kind of games. Like, I totally could see like an arcade type of game working when you can just, you know, fight and use all sorts of different elements. But what I think would be really fun is, you know, doing like an open world kind of game where, you know, you can be a Saigami, you know, you can pick, you know, your element, you can set up an avatar and stuff like that, and you can just go on your own Saigami adventure. That would be super fun. Uh, try to pick, I mean, official covers, not YouTube covers. Yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely get what you're, what you're thinking. I, I used to know the name of the guy, like, uh, I used to have the CDs uh, for Digimon uh, soundtracks in German, and, and yeah, it was literally that, that one dude doing, like, every song, Pokemon, Digimon, Dragon Ball, everything, but, you know, he was good, I, I loved his voice. Um, uh, Kagami, does Saturday M have any sports manga? Not yet. <laughs> um, we do have Underground in Saturday PM, which is a martial arts, like, Underground martial arts, uh, sports manga, and it's absolutely gorgeous like you have to take a look at that like the artist for that is so incredible like my goodness <laughs> whenever i look at his artwork i'm like i have so much to improve so so yeah we, we do have uh underground and stay tuned for more um So, Kita, at least you take time to read everyone's comments and questions. I have no problem with it. Well, thank you. And, and you know, I, I try to. I mean, sure, the streams are 
for me to draw for your entertainment, I guess, but at the same time, I really do enjoy having interaction with you guys. So even though, you know, I'm skipping a few comments when it's just conversation because I, I need to keep this ball rolling and I really want to answer all the questions and stuff like that, all the comments that are targeted at me. Um, I, I absolutely appreciate and respect uh, that you guys are here with me, that you're spending your afternoon, your evening, your morning with me. Um, and yeah, I, I, I really do enjoy the interaction. Even though I'm kind of starting to lose my voice, but I'm having fun. Um, Reaper of Crows. Also, I know it's a late response, but thanks for wishing me luck. I work hard to present my story to Summer of Manga. Go for it. Good luck. <laughs> um, try to epic. Uh, what is your opinion on Shonen Sign and Hybrids like Chainsaw Man? Uh, <laughs> well, Chainsaw Man, I kind of find interesting at first. Like, I was like, what the hell am I reading here, Ivan? And, you know, because it felt so wrong on so many levels, it kind of hooked me. So I was reading several first chapters and I was like, I'm still not sure what I'm reading, but I'm in here for the ride. And then it just all went downhill. Like, uh, they, um, well, it's a minor spoiler, but it's better if you're prepared for that. They had that, like, super gross scene with a kiss and a puke. And if you read it, you know what I mean. Or, or you've seen Shonen Jump promoting that stuff. And I was like, no, I'm out. I'm out. Um, this is not interesting. This is not daring. This is just juvenile shit. And, uh... And I was like, yeah, th this is not for me. There might be an audience for that. I almost took the bait, but mm -mm, no. This is not what I want to read for my entertainment. So, so yeah, it's you know, it's not like I have a stick up in my butt or something, but it's just like there, there, there's a line you shouldn't cross, and that was just too much for me. So, yeah. Uh, Clyde Carpatan, it will be my honest existence uh, if I were to have a privilege to be an assistant for myself. Mrs. Andrea or Mr. Dunze. Well, stay tuned for the future, you know, maybe there will be options. I mean, you know, it, it would be so much easier for us as well if we, we could be working together with assistants to help our works and stuff like that. So, so yeah. <laughs> um, PD artist, so recently I got to go. Your artwork is amazing as ever. I hope to be a part of your next live stream. Bye. Well, thank you for being here with us tonight. and. You're probably already asleep or whatever. <laughs> I'm probably still 20 minutes behind. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, people are telling me I still have a lot to <laughs> scroll up and I'm um, at least catching up. Um, Harukami Art. By the way, if you haven't seen Hunter x Hunter yet, I can highly recommend to you to watch uh, to get that uh, because it's actually pretty good. Are you watching it currently in German? Oh, okay, that sounds interesting. Like, Hunter x Hunter I could never get into. I, I watched quite a few episodes of the anime, I started the manga, but it's just not really the magic for me, but, you know, I could be bribed with some German dubs, so... Maybe. <laughs> um, Haruka Miyart, Frank Schindel was one of the big song artists. Also one of my favorite lead singer. Thank you! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, like, oh my god, he, that guy is my childhood, <laughs> and I absolutely still love the German covers to this day. Kagami, oh no, Saigami is about to be caught up, talk people, talk, oh my god, I did it, I did it, I'm finally there, I caught up, it took me like three hours, but I did it, <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> You guys talk a lot and I love you for it. <laughs> like, sure, it was tough to catch up, but... Okay, I'm gonna close this. Um, and I think it's still better when, when we have all sorts of conversation going on and when I'm just like... Yeah, watch me draw. Glad <laughs> um, Um How do you manage your time, by the way? Not well enough. 
Um, I'm I'm trying. Like I I I know that um, time management is one of my biggest skills. I'm not much of an organized person to begin with. Um, and ever since coming back to Hungary, everything's been a mess. So after a while, I completely gave up on on time management because I was working crazy hours. I was commuting a lot, uh, like, you know, sometimes running over two hours just to get to work. And um, yeah, so in the last few months, I haven't done any proper time management. So I, I just started to work on stuff whenever I found the time and stuff like that. Um, but <laughs> hopefully that will change soon. Just, just three more weeks. And um, yeah, then I, I will go back to my, my proper scheduling when I, I plan ahead my days, like I know when I will be having meetings and set up things accordingly. Um, I actually watch quite a few YouTube videos about time management and uh, how to use like blocking on your calendar to, to tie your time and, and what tricks you can use to help improve that. So if you're interested in that, I recommend that because they can give you advice much better than I do because I fail at this stuff on a personal level so many times on a daily basis that yeah I'm I'm still trying so so yeah. Uh five crap attend twenty four hours is not enough for me. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. And you know, yeah. Especially when you have to work like twelve or twenty four hours. It's just it's crazy. Like yeah. I, I really don't like my hotel shifts on that account but I'm spending the whole day there and then just can't plan, can't make progress. Uh, Ricardo Duron, quick, let's talk so much, you pause behind again. <laughs> so now you're the one putting the pressure on me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, uh, Reaper of Crows, I know that this might sound strange, but are there any voice actors you have in mind for playing the cast of Saigami? <laughs> Uh, you must have joined a bit later, because actually we've been over this topic uh, somewhere around the beginning of the stream, I think. Or at least it was the beginning for me, <laughs> you were probably 20 minutes ahead. Um, so what we came to is that I would love to have Michael Jones for Sean. Um, he's the voice of Sting in Fairy Tale, voice of Sun in Ruby, and a bunch of others. Um, but I just can't remember at the moment. He's also Max in Camp Camp. Uh, so there's that. Um, I would love Yuri Lovental for Reiji. He's the voice of uh, Sasuke from Naruto, a bunch of others. He's also the voice of uh, Mercury in Ruby. Um, and for Ayumi, we came to the decision apparently that Laura Bailey could be a good fit. and. I, I think she could work. Or my other thought for Ayumi was Erin Zack. Um, so yeah, that that's for the main three. I I don't know about the rest of the characters. Like you know, sometimes I'm I'm watching. Um, no, but I'm only watching movie. So <laughs> like I I don't watch English dubbed anime. Um, that much, so there's that, but you know, there were a few times I was like, yeah, I could imagine this voice to this character or to that character, so, so yeah. Yeah, but I, I would be super happy with these three for the, 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 the main three. So yeah. <laughs> um... Sokita, let's try to keep the chat short so she can keep up. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Haruka Miyart. Also, I wouldn't call it German covers because they official songs, but I get what you mean with calling them covers. Yeah, well, yeah. They are basically the German versions. So, the official German versions. So, yeah, not, not really like fun with covers. Um, the real anime is the boy. <laughs> Probably. Um, where do you see Saigami in two years? Not finished yet. <laughs> uh, I don't intend to have Saigami go on for too long. Like I, I, I'm, I'm really wanting to wrap up the story in like ten volumes, twelve at most. 
Um, so in two years, I hopefully will be about halfway through the story. Because currently I'm drawing volume 3, but I really, really hope to pick up the pace. Once I'm settled down for good and I don't have to sell my soul at a hotel. Um, so I, I really hope that in two years we'll be about five or six volumes in the story. And that was super exciting. Um, Ricardo Duran. Was that Laura Bailey I heard? <laughs> Cat ears stand up. Oh, the vision I have now in my head. <laughs> um, Kagami, been making dinner for the past 40 minutes, so I haven't been active to make her fall behind again. You're failing us. <laughs> oh my god, I'm hungry too. But I shouldn't date this late here. Um, so yeah, I actually put down the pencil, so <laughs> I'm slowly letting this Let's go. Um, the Reaper of Crows. Uh, nice voice actor choices, Sunny. Well, thank you. I, I've been putting in at least five minutes of thinking. <laughs> um, no, like I, I actually been thinking because people have been asking me about voice actors, and uh, you know my husband was like, well, I totally know what hungry voice actors I would love to have for my main characters because you know I'm I'm absolutely on board and and know stuff about and, and you know. I know the hungry and voice actors. I, I, I kind of had my vision with Japanese voice actors because I've been watching, you know, obviously a lot of Japanese anime. So I was like, yeah, I could imagine that voice or that voice to this character or to that character. But when it came to English dub, I was quite a noob. So, so yeah, I'm only getting familiarized with with English dub in like the last year. So, so yeah. Um, Spade. Hello, Mrs. Andrea. Hello, Spade. Um, <laughs> we're, we're kind of with the wrap up here, but I'm, I'm so happy you could join us. Uh, Clyde Kerpatan. Woke up early for work. Season is live stream. Didn't come to work just to watch. <laughs> Boy, I, I hope it's okay. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm not about to talk, but you should be careful about what you do at work. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I completely failed at finishing up this artwork, but at least I have a really fine sketch. So I probably will ink and color this a bit later, and by that time there will be at least some 10 different versions of this very artwork, because like I said, I can already see a bunch of it. So, so yeah, there's that, but I had a lot of fun. I, yeah, both with the artwork, both with the chat, I, I think... Even though I was like 30 minutes behind you guys, I, <laughs> I really enjoyed the conversation and I hope that you had fun as well. And um, before I get off of this stream, um, I I actually have some announcements, so <laughs> that's why I hope you're not just leaving just yet. Um, so, uh, I do have now a Saigon Project Discord. It's very fresh, I just started it up. Discord before was something that was only part of the Patreon perks, um, but I today made a lot of changes to my Patreon, so if you're interested in that, you can check that out. I have a bunch of new perks and a different system. Um, so we do have now a Discord that is open to everyone. Of course, Patreon supporters still will have some private channels and some other perks. But after this stream is done, I'm gonna leave the link to the Discord in the community section and probably will post it on other social media as well. Um, so if you're interested in more communication with me or uh, you know just want to check it out or you're, you're just on board with Discord, I'm a noob for Discord, so it will be a rocky start. Um, then please check out the Discord, check out the Patreon. Um, don't forget you can read the first two chapters of Saigami online for free at Saturday AM's homepage. Um, you can find all links to Saturday AM, to Saigami, you can get the volumes. They could be perfect Christmas presents, for example. Um, and yeah, uh, this has been super fun. Super tiring, but super fun. And we have some big news coming. Um, I have some very exciting news coming, so um, I'm so excited and I did a good job because I didn't talk about it, so <laughs> I'm really proud of myself today and um, I, I can't wait um, to announce some stuff. And um, 
yeah, thank thank you very much for joining me for this stream tonight. And thank you very much for all of your support and for being here with me. And don't forget links there, there, every, everywhere. And um, yeah, thank you very much for joining me tonight. And I see you next time in my next video. So good night, good morning, have fun, take care.